All right. Take good care of what you've got, my father said to me. As he puffed his pipe and baby bee, he dangled on his knee. Don't fool with fools who turn away and listen to the ramble cast. Queen song for anyone who doesn't know it. Very good. Nice. Welcome back to the Ramble uh, RCAD. Happy New Year's, everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah. 2019. We're back. It's it's back. been a minute. It has. It's been at least what three weeks? Two yeah. weeks. I, so much has happened. I mean, Bird Box and uh, <laughs> Christmas, and Nick had a birthday, and that's right. <laughs> there was a bunch of football games. Yeah, and, I would uh, like to uh, congratulate anyone, whoever decided to put this recording on the national championship day. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest with you, I just don't care. I, well, you guys picked it. I know, I just, I forgot, I thought it was tomorrow for some reason. So I was like, oh, never mind. You, you know what, I'll, I'll wait and watch last, wasn't it last year, wasn't it Alabama and Clemson, or was it Georgia last year? It was uh, last year, I don't know. It's always Alabama and somebody. Alabama's become the Patriots. Yeah, pretty much. Everybody's like, tired of them winning. Yeah. It's like, eh, I, I, I'm rooting for the Patriots this week. Or do I? Uh, that, that That's what I was going to ask you. So here's the thing. We, we've been talking about, first of all, let me tell you the woe is me story for the, for the day. So we, we've been talking about and planning about our patrons hangout where we're going to order pizza and all that shit and, and, right. and, and hang out. And, which this, is awesome. this Sunday. Which it's happening. And, 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 and by the way, so this discussion started probably a month ago. Would you agree? About a month ago, we it's first started talking about this. It, it's it, been it, in the works for almost like two months. Well, it, so, it, was, it was it was just basically please Dan, the serial killer. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone's afraid because he keeps bringing up, I want you guys to order pizza and talk about it. <laughs> and, so, you know, so finally we said, fuck it. Just order the pizza and talk about it. So from the get-go, I have been very forthright being like, hey, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. It's cool if you guys do without me because every Sunday – of that month is in Saturday is kind of like in jeopardy. Cause you don't know what the playoff schedule is going to be. And if my Patriots are in it, I will not be available probably pretty much all day because the regular season Patriots games is, is an all day affair with my, with my circle of friends. Right. So we, we spend the entire day either prepping, hanging out, watching the game, eating, drinking the whole nine. It becomes an all day affair. So you can imagine what it's like for the playoff season, right? I'm incommunicado. Uh, wait, I'm not used to that. So Sorry, what happens? <laughs> we're we're used to that up here. Um, okay. with, with playoff season, you know, ten straight years, um, it's <laughs> it's uh, it, it's an all day thing. So from the get go, I felt bad, but I was being very truthful. I'm like, Colleen, here's the deal: like, I can't nail down a date. I can't do it. Don't plan. Just plan without me. And if I can make it, I'll make it. So we landed on. Um, this upcoming Sunday, which so fortuitously happens to be the Chargers versus the Patriots, <laughs> which I can't wait to hear your take on, Jack. But then all of a sudden I'm sitting here and I'm realizing I look at my phone and look at my schedule. I'm fucking working. <laughs> like, I, I, after all of this shit, like, it didn't even matter because I somehow asked off the wrong days and requested the wrong days off. So I have to work oh, during the game, and shit. I'm I'm not happy at all about that this. Sucks. Oh, you look I mean, like, you awesome look like you're not. Look, like look like you're catching something. I think I think it sounds like a perfect way to walk into an Apple store and demo Apple TV for people <laughs> to uh, to say, "Look at these screens; they're so good. You can watch this high definition football game." Uh, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. <laughs> they don't have the subscription. Um, so uh, um, you can go. What, look, this is what you do. You have computers there. You go on yeah. Reddit.com under NFL streams, and you can watch any game you want. Okay. Well, so we would not do that um, <laughs> at all. However, if you do have the NFL Network app, you can stream it for free, which is good. Um, but it just that's it was just. The worst. I, here I am. Like my my biggest concern was missing pizza with you all, 
I'm like, sorry. Like, and then I'm sitting here and I realize, fuck, I'm going to miss the game. <laughs> so, Well, if, if I was still a Charger fan, I wouldn't have done it either way, whether the Chargers won or lost, because either if they won, I'd be in too good a mood to a podcast. Right. If they lost, I'd be in way too bad a mood. Oh yeah, jeez. I would also. I would be in the same place. I'd be like, "Fuck this pizza." Yeah. <laughs> or I mean, I don't. I don't. I want to make it sound like I, 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 patrons don't matter, and the and you know the fellow podcasters don't matter. But I just wouldn't be in a good mood. Yeah, it, it, totally. It, or it, or you know, vice versa. And I I know there's people who are involved that probably think that what's the big fucking deal? <laughs> I'm not gonna just argue that other than the fact that you know to certain people this is really big i i hear you i actually have people sending me uh, messages please go back and root for the chargers this week <laughs> tell please, little, you, here, here's what you do don't you root for them. the don't root for the patriots this week please 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 root for the chargers i'm you just telling people to go fuck themselves I, well i mean i, I mean <laughs> It, no, it, it, it didn't work. It, it, it didn't it, work out well so it, for Jack all these years. For it, well, no, that's what I'm saying. It's Patriots fans telling me this. Yeah. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I wasn't clear. Patriots fans. Are, uh, it's Patriots fans to me. Can you please be a Charger fan for just one more week? That's actually. You know, and what, th- now that I think about it, it's fantastic. Because I'm thinking about because you got you got these asshole LA Charger fans that are all of a sudden Charger fans who were never Charger fans. You know, to me, if. I, I know that there's fair weather fans when the team wins, you know, you know, I'm sure there were Patriots fans that weren't Patriots fans up until 20 years ago. And now they're Patriots fans, but you know, ch- being a charger fan was long. It was, a, it was, it was, it was, it was tough. It was, you, you know, there were one in 15 years. There it's were sadomasochism. Is it yeah, I mean, it's just like, okay, I supported this team, whether they won or lost. It, it was just, that's, it was my team and I lived and died by it. I still am pissed about the game. Matt knows this. Oh Yeah. The Patriots game in, in 2006 7 season where the Chargers made 14 mistakes and, and still had the chance. They stopped Brady all and intercepted him on fourth and long when they should have just knocked the ball down, game over, and lost. And I, I so it, it, so it's it's a it's stupid when you think about it. That was the year that the Colts went to the Super Bowl and won with. Yeah, it, it should have been it should have been the Chargers. That was a Chargers Super Bowl. That's the year the fucking clock is right twice a day. And if they if they win that Super Bowl, they probably are still in San Diego because everything falls into place and blah 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 blah. Anyway, fuck you, Dean Spanos. <laughs> but uh, I forgot what I was saying. Lost track. Anyway, I. Um, I lost completely. I, just, I forgot what I was well, talking well, about. Well, here's here's my question, uh, Chris. Do you is this something where you can avoid complete media blackout being in an Apple store, or is this something that like everybody's going to be talking about and you, you can't avoid? Like, uh, it's not possible. Not possible. Not possible. At all. Um, so I will um, be doing as much office work as possible. But that <laughs> I, I was I was in a situation uh, this past Saturday with the the Colts game. Uh, where we were, we were out of town, traveling. I saw that you weren't. I, you probably weren't watching the game. I I wasn't, and I was trying to avoid spoilers at at any cost. I even put my phone on airplane mode just so that I wouldn't get any like messages, like Jack saying like, you know, something about the Colts. Break up the Colts. Yeah, that was the one thing that I saw before I had watched the whole game, and I was like, well, this might go good. Or maybe Jack's being just an asshole. So I really <laughs> still didn't know. There's always that chance. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm out of town and I've got the game being DVR'd. And we stopped to get like some food, you know, just at some, some kind of podunk diner. And they've got a TV on with a sports game on. It's, it's actually basketball. And I'm like, whew, thank goodness it's basketball. Sports ticker. And I'm like, no, no. I put my back to... The TV, right? So okay. I'm not going to even watch the sports ticker. I overhear like some people actually talking about the Colts game. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, like, they were, they didn't know they didn't know shit though because they were like, "Oh, I think the Colts are playing today." And I was like, "Please, please, do not ask them to change the channel to the Colts game." Like, like I got it recorded. I just want to get home safe and sound and watch this game uh, as it plays out. So. I, I succeeded though. Somehow I succeeded. As, aside from uh, Jack's would be like spoiler there. Um, and, well, uh, to be honest with you, if I, I didn't see that you were out 
to like an hour. I think I saw it on Instagram or something. An sure. hour later, I said, oh, he's not watching the game. Well, that was pretty fucked up what I did. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I, I did not. It still didn't spoil me because there was a part of me that was like. Well, to be, to, be, to be fair, what are you doing going on Facebook? It was on Messenger. It was on Facebook Messenger. Because because we were talking about the pizza party, we were playing on the pizza. Well, that, I'm sorry, that, that's a rookie mistake on your. Part. I, I know it was a rookie mistake, yeah. but uh, you that's know not, yeah. that's not my fault. It didn't. That's, spoil, your, that's it didn't, your own damn fault. It didn't spoil me that much though. So I mean, it's not like you said like you know Colts lost or something like that. So I was able to still watch the game with uh, as much drama as I could muster. And hey, yeah, they still- came out. They came out guns blazing, uh, twenty-one to zero, and uh, they almost you know they almost kept them. From scoring that uh, other touchdown. It, it is tough though when you decide you're going to go. You're going to go off the grid and oh, record, yeah. the, record the game because I I know uh, I, uh, I I remember I used when I used to ref college games or something like that. I'd go okay, nobody can watch the football game till I watch it. We watch it <laughs> as a family. I would, well, it's not fair. But they would watch. My my daughter would be on her phone, and mm. she go she go yes. But I'm like twenty. I'm like twenty minutes behind her. I go. She goes, oh, I'm, I'm thinking about something else. I go, I go, shut up. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. It's like my dad, we used to watch the Indy 500 when I was a kid, and they used to do it on, they didn't show it live like they do now. They would show it at night because nobody would watch it live like they do now. Uh, but they would, who were watching the thing, there's like 17 laps to go, and the station it was on came in with like a, oh. a, 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 news, a news break. And was talking about different stuff, and they were showing this place called uh, Black Speech in San Diego where people go around naked. Legally, they're not supposed to do it, but they do it anyway. And people were thinking about They were trying to close. So they showed naked They showed naked people on the – and we're like on – so we kind of got – you know, you're, you're watching that, so you're losing your concentration. And then they go, Ellen, A.J. Foyt wins the Indy 5 or whoever it was. or I think it was Alan Sir. Alan Sir wins the, the Indy 500, and I go – with 17 laps to go, they, then they come back to the race. <laughs> the network that was showing it was NBC 39. I'll, I'll, I'll call them out. They they were showing the race, or it must have been ABC at the time, whatever it was. They 17 laps to go, they come back. So we, my dad goes, "You got to be kidding me!" He got up and walked away because he would he would not he wouldn't listen to his baseball games. He wouldn't listen to anything. He had one love in life: the Indy 500 and huh. and the Unser the Unser brothers. And and that's what he that's what he cared about. He hated AJ Foyt and Mario Andretti and all those people. <laughs> and so Al Unser went. I think Al Unser won the race, but he got it didn't mean anything to him because NBC or whoever it was spoiled it for him. Hmm. I mean, why why would you do that on your own network? Brutal. Yeah. Well, on your own network. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just curious because uh, this this sounds like a recipe for disaster for Chris. I mean, you know, he's not going to be at home watching the game. He can't do his his usual, you know, uh, routine. I'm, I'm out of my element. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm worried about the Patriots now. Like, so like, I was, I was else about the game, but knowing Chris can't watch the game live because as a as an ex Charger fan, and it's it's it, again, I don't think people understand how hard it is when you've rooted for these certain players forever. I mean, Rivers has been the quarterback of the Chargers since 2006. Don't he's you want it for Don't he's you also, want it for Rivers? Well, that's what I'm, I I get because my wife my wife was came over and sat next to me as I was watching the game, and the Ravens scored two quick touchdowns. She goes, "I'm going to go over here." I go, "No." Um, <laughs> I I said, and then the Ravens got the ball back with down by six, less than a minute to go. She goes, "I'm going over here. I don't want to jinx it." I think me being, I go, no, sit here. Because she still roots for the Chargers. My daughter, who was so ticked off that they moved, well, I want Rivers and Gates to win a Super Bowl. And, and, you know, deep down, I mean, deep down, if they won the Super Bowl, I'd be happy for Rivers and Gates and the players. It's not their fault. But I, I can't see Spanos' greasy little hands on that Lombardi <laughs> it, just, it, it just pisses me off. Wouldn't it, so, wouldn't it be just a little bittersweet, though, for you, Jack? That if the Chargers win this year, let's say in three years they decide to go back to San Diego, this trophy will always say the Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> what I think the NFL should do, 
this is my 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 philosophy on the whole thing. They should give San Diego a chance to get an expansion team like they did the Browns mm-hmm. and the Ravens, Baltimore when when the Colts moved to Indianapolis and the Browns moved to when they the, the Ravens got well no the Colts the Browns got to keep their name the Cleveland they got to keep the name the Browns and the history. I think the Chargers should rebrand become become the Los Angeles assholes after the owner <laughs> and and the Chargers the San Diego name keeps there if they can't get a stadium built and they can't get anything done then fuck it that's on, that's on San Diego because I really think if they got an owner that people cared about and could rally around it would get done give us an expansion team bring us back our history since they were there for 56 fucking years they've been in LA for a total of 3 the first year and the last two and just give San Diego an expansion team. That would that would make everybody happy, except Dean Spanos, because now he'd be keeping he, the San Diego fans. Most a lot of the San Diego fans only stayed. They hate Dean Spanos, but they stayed loyal to the Charger name. Now, if you're if you're someone like me, do you think that this is a conspiracy theory? What that they're winning? That they're winning? Yeah, because think about like I I, I thought that when the Titans you know moved to Tennessee because the Oilers always sucked always. And then what happens when the Titans get to Tennessee, they go to the Super Bowl. They still lose, but it, br- it brought enough people into the fan base to say like, Oh, like we've got a good team. Yeah. And, no, and like I Char- was there. No. And, I, uh, I, I think that they, they probably, they need, they need, the guy just did it. They need, unlike all the announcers that say, uh, that always say San Diego. Oh, yeah. Bro, bro uh, said it like four times on uh, Sunday. Yeah, I know. I noticed that. And I was like, is he doing that on purpose? Or is it just because, like, that's that's what he knows? So. It's just it's just two years later. And there's, I mean, you don't hear the people in nothing in St. Louis, but you don't hear people that, when they're doing the Rams game say St. Louis Rams. Right. They never say it. They always say San, San Diego because it's, it's, it's where the team belongs. But uh, anyway, so I just. Uh, no, I, I was thinking conspiracy, but I think they really, if they really want it, because they, they, they need L.A. to succeed. That was the problem. And the problem is you have this week, you have L.A. versus Dallas. Dallas is coming into town, and that stadium is going to be overrun by Dallas fans. Mm-hmm. There'll be more Dallas fans, in, even though the Rams have had a fantastic season the last two years. There'll be more fans, Dallas fans, in the stands in the L.A. Coliseum than Ram fans. And there's going to be more refs on the Dallas payroll. <laughs> yeah, uh, any Seattle fans that watch that game and think that uh, there's somewhat of a conspiracy, uh, I'm right there with you because there's some real shady calls that come in late for uh, Dallas all the time. So just saying. Well, that's, that's that's what I'm hoping for this week when the, the, the Chargers play the Patriots. I'm hoping they get that home cooking, hometown <laughs> cooking uh, ref calls they usually get. Where someone what, runs by Brady and, and breathes on him, fifteen yards. <laughs> <laughs> well, in just interesting facts about this weekend's game of uh, the Patriots Chargers is that it's one of uh, three of the oldest pairs of quarterbacks starting the game. Um, so it's thirty-seven year old Phil, uh, Rivers versus a forty-one year old Tom Brady up against Brady's forty-one. Uh, Brady's forty-one. Um, and then three years ago, the, the record was also set by um, was a uh, let's see the pre the Brady also shared the previous record was th- three years ago when he was thirty eight and faced off a thirty nine year old Peyton Manning, but there's one older combination in nineteen seventy one when a thirty seven year old Johnny Unitas uh, and the Baltimore Colts uh, beat a forty three year old George Blanda and the Oakland Raiders. Oh, now here is another interesting tidbit. Well, you know George Blanda wasn't always wasn't also a quarterback. He was also a, the kicker for a while. Yeah, I did not know that. I'm just let um, you know. But um, here is another thing too. There has never been a quarterback, a forty one year old quarterback, to win a playoff game in the history hmm. of the NFL. Huh. Not one. Well, I, so you said the oldest was 41 versus 43? The oldest is a 43 versus 37. That was Unitas Blanda. And then the next two were um, 38, 39, Brady, Manning, and then this weekend, 37, 41. Because you could, you could have a Super Bowl of Drew, Drew Brees and, uh, and uh, Brady, and that's 41 and 39, right? So it's, it would be, yeah. Well, and I'm trying to remember how old Favre was when he was playing because he, he, he played pretty late there too. He did. 
So, but he didn't get to a Super Bowl. When he he didn't get, no, he, no, he he lost some of those playoffs. Like I, I think they took him out on a stretcher when he played against the the Saints that one year. Yes, yeah, so no, uh, no, forty one year old quarterback in the history of the game has ever won a postseason game. Huh? Huh? Might happen this year. Better happen this year. Yep. Well, you've had then, two, um, you've had two weeks to prepare. Yeah, so there's, no, not, there's no excuses. In uh, Philip Rivers is zero and zero and seven versus Tom Brady. Yeah, I, when I saw that set, I go, I, I knew he hadn't beaten him. I go, but zero and seven. I go, that's that's pretty amazing because the, basically the Patriots are the reason we don't have a stadium. Pretty much, and but don't <laughs> don't forget, you know, last time he played in Foxborough, he also played with like a torn ACL or something like that, didn't he? Yeah, it was the AFC Championship game. He was. Uh, uh, LC had the sprain uh, MCL, and he sat there and pouted the whole time. Yep. I used, oh, to, def- also- I used to defend him, but now that he works for the Chargers, fuck him. I I, I, I say that half. I, I still love LT, but he's he's pistol. He is he's really tarnished his image in San Diego. Also, just to throw a little bit more, a few more statistics on there. So, the of the remaining AFC quarterbacks, you have Philip Rivers, who's zero and seven. Against uh, Tom Brady, you have Andrew Luck of the Colts, who's zero and six against Tom Brady, and you have Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, who's zero and one against Tom Brady. What are you trying to say, Chris? I'm Tom Brady's a fucking god. <laughs> Mahomes, that guy's a stud, though. If he you have, if you have not watched this kid play, it, the only reason they'll lose, they would lose the Colts. Sorry, Matt. Is if if Andy Reid becomes Andy Reid the coach? That well, that's what I, that's what I'm hoping for. But now here, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had this dream. Um, maybe it was prophetic. I don't know. But I had this dream that the Colts were in this playoff game against the Chiefs. Believe it or not, I did. Like I was, I was uh, about two weeks ago or something. It's a weird dream to have, you know, because I I really wasn't it wasn't on my radar. But the score, it was like the Chiefs were up by like thirty points to one. The Colts had one point. Now, you all right. What were, what were you smoking before you went to bed? I, I wasn't smoking anything. I haven't smoked anything for a long time. But <laughs> one point, I was like, you can't score one point in in a football game. So I'm not sure what my dream was trying to tell me. But uh, yeah, I don't have high hopes. Back from it. <laughs> well, the Colts did come back. They did beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs were up by 28 what, 20 20 years ago. Points. Yeah, and the Colts came back to win, 45 but, to 48. But Mahomes, the the, the reason he lost to the Chargers late in the season this season and the reason they lost to uh, Seattle is because he's trying to – he's he's he is the, – the dude's unstoppable. You let Mahomes be Mahomes. He's a stud. And just move around and just do what he can. And I don't think they can lose. I don't I don't see that – I'll be honest with you. If the Patriots beat the Chargers, if Mahomes – if Andy Reid doesn't be Andy Reid – that they should go to the Super Bowl, even though their defense is terrible. It's like watching the early '80 charge Air Coriel years that you have. De- they go down and score in like four plays, but then the defense would give up. And it's uh, like if the Chargers failed to score, that's how they would lose because their defense was so bad. It's almost the same way with the, the Kansas City because their, their defense is bad. They have a they have a bad defense, but with Mahomes, that kid is just he's just. I mean, he made a play a couple weeks ago where he it was the regular season. I think it was against Baltimore. It was fourth and like seven. He got chased out of the pocket. He got what he threw it on on the run, like sixty yards to uh, Tyreek Hill for not only first down, but but it put him in position to win the game. The kid is just he's just amazing. So Andy Reid, don't be don't be Marty Schottenheimer. I love Marty Schott. I love Marty Schottenheimer. Love Marty Schottenheimer. But don't be Marty Schottenheimer. Don't coach. Don't coach to lose the game, Andy. Coach to win. Hmm. Um, and and just a, a little uh, shout out to the Chicago Bears who can't seem to get it past the uprights. Oh, Christ! I mean, geez, I thought they had that game honestly, and then you know somehow they let the Eagles. Dude, the internet meme game following that uh, is has been phenomenal. Well, it turn, turns out it was blocked. It was tipped. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, that. that's a rumor. I don't so, know. I think that no, it's just, not, it's not a rumor. It, you, yeah. watch, you watch the video. He he does deflect it a little bit, just enough. I mean, it hits the cross. It hits. Well, I was watching it on my. I was list doing the game because I had uh, my grandkids, so I was watching it on. I was because they went to Justin Timberlake concerts. So I watched the my grandsons, and I'm 
watching it on my phone, I go, all right, they're down to like, oh, there's a 43-yard kick. All right, Bears are going to win this. And I look back, I go, final 16-15. I go, that can't what? be right. Yeah. What the hell happened? So then I went on, finally got a chance, got them all to sleep. Got them, I go, oh, my God, I couldn't be a kicker. I, I could not be. A, it's like oh. I, couldn't be, I couldn't be a relief pitcher. I couldn't be a relief pitcher. I couldn't be a kicker because that would haunt me to the day I die. But then you see, okay, and he was booed off the field. He was just, he was trashed. Mm. I mean, there'd be even Bears fans I follow on Facebook were making fun of him. And then you find out later on, oh, it was tipped. Yeah, that's too late. Damage has been done. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, so these memes have been fin- my my favorite meme so far was it was like a is a is a one question questionnaire. It said, "Are you a Bears kicker?" <laughs> and there's the, there's the no box and there's the yes box. And the actual box itself, not the center of the box, but all the, the line of the box is being checked. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's checked all around. Like, there's like, like four or five different check marks literally on the box line. <laughs> but don't you kind of, because I, like I said, the Chargers for a number have lost the Patriots a couple times, lost to the Jets a couple times because their kicker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but like, but your, your like, kicker was great during the regular season. You get but, the but, but he literally would mess three kicks every game, and you're like going, yeah. "Just make the fucking kick." But it's yeah. like I don't, I don't, I don't wish the, that those kickers, you know, to die or anything like that. But these Bears fans, ooh. Yeah, I remember back in the heyday when Adam Vinatieri was a Patriot. It was like you, you didn't think twice. Like, oh, Vinatieri's up automatic. Automatic. Oh, he had like some crazy streak. I don't remember how many kicks he had consecutively, um, but it was just like this crazy, crazy streak. There is two things I loved most about watching the Patriots in, like in the two thousands, and that was, and believe it or not, like a lot of it wasn't Tom. I mean, I mean Tom was amazing, but our defense was like entertaining to watch. You just wanted to see what they were going to do next, and also you wanted to see. Adam Vinatieri's boot forty-five year old field goals all day long with no problem whatsoever. Like the Patriots got past the, the thirty-five yard line, like oh, automatic points, no big deal. Um, You're talking about memes and stuff like that. There's a great one of uh, Nate Cading, who was the Charger kicker from mm-hmm. two thousand something to. I think they finally cut him in two thousand seven. Eventually, they cut him because he was so terrible. But it showed a, a stat with him had this face where he just looked like he's just died. He's got, he's just got this face, you know, and it showed his regular season where he missed three field goals all season. And it showed today, 0 for 3. <laughs> and it was like, you go, and you just go, why? But then, but I blame, but I blame the coaches on that. Don't play for a field, because Marty a lot of times would play just, okay, we're close enough. I mean, you had L, you had LT, you had Michael Turner. Why the, why the hell are you playing for a field goal? But anyway, that's that's life, and that's how it is. Well, James, meanwhile, you might, meanwhile, Nick has uh, his, some college football, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm watching. Like, I was like, well, you guys are having your NFL. I'm watching my college. Uh, and surprise, is, is, is Tennessee that, in the national championship? No, it's halftime now. Um, just halftime. It's Clemson versus Alabama, and Clemson is shockingly winning yeah. 31 to 16. Nice. What? what? A lot yeah. of money being lost on that. Clemson is just really I – mean, you can watch it. They're really wanting this game right now. Good. Well, that's the problem with college football. It's, it's almost like Major League Baseball. It's just you have the, the halves, you know, just year after year. I mean, Alabama has players on their roster that sit on the bench that could be starting for San Diego State. Oh, it's insane. Like, uh, <clears throat> Dad and me were talking about this during the break uh, – is that, you know, like you look at any college program, they will make such a big deal. It's like we have a five star recruit out of, you know, Texas or whatever, like, or we have, you know, we have two that have signed with us, or we have, you know, we have four, four stars, you know, and it's like Alabama, we have 30 five stars signing <laughs> 50 four stars. And you're like, Jesus, like, it's just, it's not, you can't, yeah, if, if, if you're starting on Alabama, it's because you're really good mm-hmm. because you're that good. I mean, you're, I go back, go back to college. Pro, pro, you look at the Patriots. Sometimes you look at the roster and go, "How are they winning?" It's because they they have a system and they put these players in. They can bring you know, he, Belichick brings people in that fit his system. Yeah, they're not necessarily stars, but you look at the like I said Alabama. You go, oh "My God, they they have guys on the bench that are five star guys that don't even play." But it doesn't make sense to me, really. I mean, it, it depends on your your personality as a player. 
Because I know if I was a really, really good athlete, you have to make that decision. Like, do you want to go for Alabama and possibly only play for two years of your career? But you're, you're most likely going to get a national championship ring. Right. Or do you want to start for a, a good, probably top 10 school or top 20 school and be a starter most likely at least three to four years? You know, I, I would I want to play. I want to play. You know. Well, my wife was, we were at Buffalo Brothers Day and they had all the TVs on. They were showing the Alabama 2015 national championship game between Alabama and Clemson. And I said, well, they just, Alabama's in it every year. She goes, why? I go, because they have the best players. I go, they have players, like I said, that are sitting on the bench. I go, she goes, well, why would they go there? I go, well, I go, this is where you, do you want to go? Do you think you have a chance of going to the pros? Yeah. Or do you want a chance at winning the national championship game, national championship? I go, that's I think what it comes down to. If you're one of those guys that say, like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'll be a good college player," right? But I have no chance of making the pros. Right. I probably I probably go to Alabama. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just because I want to say, "Hey, I'm number one." It's, it's it's funny how like especially with quarterbacks, there's a lot of that where like you're you're a very good college quarterback, but you're terrible um, NFL, and <laughs> and and the opposite. Like Peyton Manning was a decent, even though he's up for the Heisman Trophy, he's a decent college quarterback. But he's not made for college football. He's made for NFL because he gets, Ooh. you know. Alabama's been how many national championships in, over the my oh, lifetime? Who, oh, who's the, who, when was the last great NFL quarterback to come out of Alabama? Oh, yeah. It's not, there's Joe, one. Is it Joe not, Namath? Not great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, as, as in what everyone knows their name? Yeah, probably Joe Namath. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying a guy that actually made it and was a star in the NFL. I, 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 I know that there's that guy that has the, uh, Webb was married to married the girl Webb mm-hmm. that uh, what's his name uh, made such a big deal about uh, the the announcer uh, Brett Musburger oh, right right but I, I just I can't remember I can't remember his name I can remember, only remember his, his wife's name but it's funny it's funny like you got someone like Brett Favre who played for Southern Miss I mean not a great program ever you know but he's a legend in NFL well you know but he was only a second round pick. Yeah, that's by, what I'm saying. Like, by, by the, a lot of people probably don't know he was a second round pick by the Atlanta Falcons, but I think they had Jeff George at the time. Who did they have? They had somebody, and they traded him to Green Bay. And I, I, I remember the time I go, why would Green Bay trade a number one for this number two? The guy was a second round pick. Well, I was wrong. I, don't, I, I think I, I, I mentioned this a long, long time ago, like probably one of the first times. Because I still, it's one of those facts that always blows my mind when you think about it. Um, the number the one time Brady was a sixth round pick. I mean, I'm just saying. No, no, is that uh, uh, no, Tom Brady threw me off. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what uh, interrupt him, Chris? He yeah. has, he has an effect on people. It was who's the famous quarterback from the Steelers in the seventies? Uh, 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 Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw. Terry oh, Bradshaw, yeah. number one draft pick, 1970, signed a ten year contract with the Steelers for a hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money back then. Though. I know, but like you're getting paid ten grand a year. I mean, that's, at, that's at, nuts. At, at, at the time, his wife was a professional figure skater. She was probably making about five hundred a week. Ah, okay. <laughs> JoJo Starbuck was his uh, wife at the time. But you look at Tom. I, I know we talked about this on Sports Talk. Was three stupid guys. If Tom Brady had been drafted by Cleveland, does Tom Brady? Do we even do we even know who Tom Brady is? No, no, that's no, probably, probably not. He's going to die. I, well, we've would, talked about, yeah. because he, he, would, about he, he would be like a third string quarterback, never get a chance, not working in a system that they know what they're doing. Or he'd be in a system where basically the O line just like, you know, it's terrible. Gives, gives him up for, for dog meat. So. Well, that's why Alabama keeps winning their O line. That's where you look at, look at the first round draft choices in the NFL. It's the O line and defensive line from Alabama. And that's where they dominate. That's where that's how you win football games is, is you have the, oh, beef, yeah. the beef up front. Anyway. Anywho, we probably lost about 15 people the, the sports talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> skip 20 minutes for our football talk. But, you know, yeah. we, had, we had to talk about it. I mean, it we, happened it, this weekend. It, it, it did each, happen of this weekend. Has, each of us has a, has a team in the hunt except for Nick. So well, uh, wait, 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 well, yeah, the the team I, I was rooting for lost last week to uh, to uh, Indianapolis. So. <laughs> like, like I said, we we each have a team in the in the hunt here. So yeah. uh, I'll I'll talk about like uh, <laughs> just some dorky stuff. Like so, as we said in the beginning, uh, my birthday was Friday. So 
uh, on Saturday. How old, pre- how old are you? I'm 38. So that, that makes you the youngest. I'm the youngest, yeah, but not by much. Um, Chris is eight months older than me. Yeah, so, I'll be 39 wait. in May. Didn't Chris have a birthday just recently? <laughs> yeah, it was on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to bring it back up, but it would yeah, be- I know, I know. Yeah. I really, w- I really thought Chris had a birthday for something. Matt. Matt ruined a, jo- a perfect joke before the- we started. I almost made made uh, Jack lose it all over his keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you enjoyed your birthday. You're, you're yeah. 38 years old. You're, you're knocking on 40's door. No, not yet. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> not. Yeah, but uh, so uh, a friend of mine I went to grad school with because I always am out and about in California, and he he didn't know it was my birthday, but he was like, "Hey, like I've been wanting to do something. Is there anything on your list of things you want to do in California you haven't done yet?" And I was like, "It's like yeah, I was like I kind of want to go down to the safari park that's just the north of San Diego. I haven't been since 2002." And he's like, "All right, let's do that." Which for anyone Wait, out there, the safari park, the one that's in San Diego, it's just north of San Diego. Not it's, the code, zoo. it's code for prostitution, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's the San Diego Wild Animal Park. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, it's called the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. So it's San Diego. It is in San Diego. It's in San Diego County, but it's you not in the you, city you limits you of San Diego. You don't have to change the name like fucking Spanos did. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, for anyone out there that has ever been, it's 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 nothing like a zoo. It's all open. So It's, it's terrible. It's not terrible. I like it. It smells like I, shit everywhere, but it's it's. <laughs> I, I've been there like five times because we, we used to have season passes for the mm-hmm. uh, for the zoo and the uh, my my wife hated the zoo in Wild Island Park, so I would take the kids, mm-hmm. and we'd go on the tram, and they go, yeah, just a few minutes ago, there were some lions over here, but they probably are sleeping now. And you just drive, <laughs> I, I, my kids are like going, where's I go? I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> well, the- we'll do and see everything. Maybe it's exact. I went in 2002 and it seemed different to me now because everything that's on the tram ride are very not domesticated, but things that don't move very much. You know? So you can Turtles. see, you can see, you can see the, you can see the, you know, the rhinoceros and everything, and the giraffes and everything. There's like, oh yeah, they're standing over there. Like oh, okay. robotics. It's robotics. Yeah, robotics. Mm-hmm. It's, but it's, all, you might as well just go to Disneyland. Hey, but there's Lincoln. Stuff. It was Lincoln. <laughs> Four score seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, but I liked it. You know, I saw some elephants and tigers and lions and everything. And then bears. no bears. That's the, that's, that's the let go. That's the let down. Yeah. No bears. Uh, the, bear, the bears were to the left. Put them up. Put them up. Uh, the yeah, they, the let, <laughs> yeah. They were just outside. Just <laughs> there, but couldn't quite make it. Uh, but the thing, the thing I really wanted to do, other than the safari park, was uh, I wanted to go to medieval times. That was the uh, the dorky thing I wanted to do because I was like, that's, I, that's by Disneyland, right? It's right by Disneyland, but oh, I hadn't been. I've always I, wanted to do it, but I never went. I went to the one in Dallas when I was ten, and I remember loving it. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm probably it's probably not going to live up to what my ten year old self loved about it, but <laughs> I want to go to see a bunch of guys dressed up in armor beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah. You know? You were, thinking, you were thinking Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. you know, actually, I got there, and, you know, they put the stupid little paper crown on your head and all that. But, you know, we're getting these big, huge mugs. Was it because it, was it because of your birthday? No, they no, they give them. like a birthday crown? You're they give the birthday them. boy! They, they, they give them to everybody. And if I would have told them it would have been my birthday, they would have brought the king and the queen out, and they would have knighted me. But oh. every, time I, every time I think of someone knighting, I think of King Ralph, where he has a sword and he like almost cuts the guy's ear off. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, "Oh, I got him! I nicked him! I nicked him!" And like, I'm like, I'm not doing it. Sorry, so you, didn't, you didn't do it. Come on, how often nah. do you turn 38? Yeah. And how often do you get knighted in America? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man. like, I think you, you could be called self Sir Nick now. Yeah. Wait, Sir Other Guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Sir Other. Yeah, uh, run away. Uh, uh, so you know, have you know the big big pint, I mean not a pint, big mug of beer and everything, and you know, and, the, and they you know they feed you like half a chicken and you know corn and potatoes, and it's like you all eat with your hand. It's very you know, they try to keep it theme like. Did you do this after you went to the animal park? Yeah, I went to the animal park in the morning. Oh, so, you, so you went and watched animals. Yeah. And then, went, then you went and ate a bunch of animals. Then I went and ate yeah half a chicken <laughs> and uh, some stuff. But uh, at first, we, I was like. This sucks because you're sitting there and you're eating, and it's all and the, kind of, and the it's all down. it's all theatric, you know, and like in really bad acting. And then you have like a bunch of horse shows of them, like you know, uh, fancy horse moving, you know, feet and, and you know, saying on hind legs. And you're like, 
all right, guy, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I want to see some some bloodshed, you know. <laughs> and it, after like thirty minutes, you're thinking, oh crap, is this? Did I? Is it? Did I buy the wrong show? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, and then finally they do. They're like, okay, you know. And then they they come out and they joust and they do. They ride the horses full on and hit each other on the on the shield wow. and all that. Are they just and doing they, the horse dancing thing because you're eating at the time and maybe they just want you to be distracted? I think so. Like it's something for, to do while you're eating. Yeah. Cause like the last, the last half of the show is them jousting and knock each other off the horses. And then once they get on the ground, you know, they get the mace and the chain out and the swords and they all, you know, oh. you know, mm. and they, and they slash at each other and it's, it's pretty, it's entertaining. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it's totally rigged and acted, but it's, it's still entertaining. Get to the good part. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if anyone if anyone has seen the Cable Guy, that's kind of what made that. Place. Oh yes, I was thinking. That, yeah. yeah, there's a movie that, and I was like, yeah, I couldn't movie? remember the movie, but now that you said it, yes, the Cable mm-hmm. Guy. And of course, every joke from that movie with that scene made me think of it because my my friend who had never been either is like, you know, they give you a bowl of tomato soup in the bowl, and then he's sitting there waiting, like, are they going to give me a spoon? You know, and I look and I was like, there were no utensils in medieval times since there are no utensils at medieval times. He's like, well, there is, but there is Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. I was like, What's that? <laughs> That's awesome. So you had a great birthday is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it was the first time I'd actually had done something on my birthday in a, in a long time because, you know, it's, it's, it's so close to the first of January that my whole life it's always been, uh, Especially, Happy New Year birthday. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, hey, it's not yet. And then, you know, when you get to college or post after college, it's all like, hey, man, I know it's your birthday, but I'm still kind of hung over and broke from the first. So, like, I, I don't maybe next week. And you're like, uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, a shame, it's a shame you can't pick your birthday, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like nobody wants to be born on Christmas Day, right? No. No, I mean, that, I mean it's the same thing. If you're a Capricorn, you have the shittiest birthday there is because, like, you do. And my whole life, you know, it's like if I want four Ninja Turtles for Christmas, I'm getting two for Christmas and two for my birthday. And so, oh like, you know, shit, yeah, well, you gotta I, wait. I, I know when I was a kid, they used to sing Happy Birthday to whosoever birthday it was. Well, my birthday was in August. Never got Happy Birthday sung to me. You think they would have said because now they would go, all right, every kid that didn't have a birthday that to come up and line up so we can sing Happy because they, you know, they got to be PC. But back then, it was like fuck you. You were born in the wrong time of year. I, you were not born during school year. You don't get sing, they don't sing happy birthday to you. So I never got happy birthday sang to me. But like summer birthdays, you could go to the pool and you could have pool parties. I yeah. mean, how kick ass was that? Like, I didn't have a pool. Well, that's not my fault. <laughs> you had the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did have the when I got older. Yeah, sure, we had the ocean. But, Fucking yeah. calm down, Jack. No, no, no bullshit. <laughs> my mom, my mom would take us to the Mission Bay and say, "Hey, we're going to the beach." I go. I go, I go, Mom, this is not the beach. It's the bay. It's the same thing. I go, I don't see it's any water. Waves. I don't see any waves. And plus, there's turds flowing in this thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> you don't swim in Mission Bay. Just uh, give you a little heads up. Don't go swimming in Mission Bay. Because the Tijuana River, flow, right. I, I guess it runs into the there and it like pollutes the, the bay. So don't uh-huh. swim. If you ever go to Mission Bay, sure, you can boat. You can go on a boat and stuff like that. Wash yourself down really good afterwards. But don't swim in Mission Bay. No, it's not, it's, it's not good for you. But it's not the ocean, Mom. <laughs> Coincidentally, it's the same water they use to make Corona. <laughs> That's Jack's favorite drink. I, I like Corona. <laughs> you, you would, Jack. I did have a nice beer today at the. I had a. Uh, it was a L at the Buffalo Brothers. It was L. Oh, some kind of L beer was a uh, head like a L beer. <laughs> L beer. <laughs> I don't think of the name. I can't, I can't remember the name, but it was. Oh, it was I get a pint of L beer. It was a it was a light L that had uh, just called L beer row on your orange in it and stuff like that. It was really I, I enjoyed it. It was really good. It reminds me of what The Simpsons would have as a Spanish. <laughs> so, I had a Brazilian beer during Thanksgiving that was superb. <laughs> was it Trump. shaved? It was a shade. It was bikini. It was waxed. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> everything is great except for the there top. There was no waxed. hair in that <laughs> yeah. beer. Yeah, uh... but they don't have like the wax drip in it, do they? Like hanging off the side. <laughs> 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 like, oh, that's kind of gross. But anyway, oh man. So Brazilian beer, eh? I'm trying to find. I do. I took a picture of it. It's actually like an X or something. But oh, that's that's kind of gross. I don't yeah, know. of course it did. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I went to the movies the other day. Yeah, oh, I, went, okay. and I, I went and saw Zingu. That's what it's called. Anyway, nice. I went and saw Bumblebee. 
Oh, oh okay. yeah, do tell. I was about that. Wait, Bumblebee. so Bumblebee is it's the, the movie about trans- story. Tra- Transformers. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the origin story of um, the Bumblebee character from Transformers. So, in a way, it was a bit of a, a reboot without rebooting, I guess you could say. So, it was Cause, a cause truly because we need another Transformer movie. Uh, and uh, here's the thing: like, I loved Transformers, the the first one with Michael yeah. Bay's first Transformers movie. Like, I actually never felt more like a kid in the movie theater in yeah. my adult ages in, since that film. You know, yeah. like, I remember watching that movie, and, and all of a sudden, like in that in that alleyway, when he, I'm Optimus Prime. Well, that, right. that was like the coolest, coolest thing. That's the one um, with Megan Fox and yeah, the, the crazy Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, the, the the ones after that have all been like I could have definitely have done without that movie. You yeah, know what I mean? exactly. Yeah. Um, they, they've come out with some other ones that I'm like, what? Like I just watched yeah. one the other day that I was like, uh, the Dark Knight last night. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even see it. No. Um, but well, anyways, so yeah, go ahead. Bumblebee. Right, so Bumblebee takes place in 1987, so it's got a cool like period piece feel to it. You know what I mean? Hey, I had um, hair back then. <laughs> yeah, my that nice. post. My- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. You, you looked like the bad guy in every quintessential early 80s film. Um, I kept, I kept getting Jan Michael Vincent. I go, you know, even I, I age better. Than- yeah, I age better than Jan Michael Vincent. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's, My, not, it's um, not saying much, but have you seen Jan Michael Vincent today? Yeah, he's a little rough. Mm. I, age, I age better than he did. He so, goes to the uh, same school as Greco. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he, he graduated ahead of Greco. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he's yeah, a big first graduating class. Um, anyway, so Bumblebee takes place in 87. Um, very cool. The, the movie starts off the really cool scene. It's, it's the battle on, um, on Me- of... Um, Megatron, no, no, not no. Megatron. Cyb- Cybertron? Are they on Cybertron? Cybertron. Yeah, Battle on Cybertron. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it shows them the evacuation and such. Um, so it goes back in time to eighty-seven. It it really kind of shows you. It was really cool because Bumblebee had a voice. Yeah. And you find out and you understand how he actually has to resort to tuning to the radio stations to speak. Um, very, very cool. No, here's Sorry, the thing. I'm just like, imagining I, his voice being like Mike Tyson, but go ahead. Is, is it going <laughs> to win an Oscar? No, I mean, it's not going to win an Oscar, but I'll tell you this, though. It was a fun movie. Like, yeah. I really enjoyed it. They got back to basics. It wasn't this huge, like, Michael Bay like film because it didn't have to be. Um, there was literally three Transformers in the entire movie, which is kind of cool. Right, oh. so it, it kind of, or maybe give or take a few. Who start? Who's in it? Bunch Haley. of no name actors. Okay. No, Haley, uh, the girl has been in lots of stuff. Oh, I've never never seen it before. Yeah, like um, she, she got famous because the remake of uh, True Grit. She was the girl. Oh, oh, okay. okay. And uh, she was um, in some young adult movie, uh, Ender's Game. She was in Ender's Game. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, but um. So she did a she did a great job. Like the the acting was great. Like John Cena is in the movie, mm-hmm. and John Cena plays he plays a part. Let me just put it that way. He plays a part, and he plays the part that you'd expect John Cena to play. Um, that like cheesy antagonist, but good guy <coughs> army dude. You know what I mean? Like he's. He actually does a really good job. It, it, in, the, in almost every one of his lines, you laugh out loud because it's just ridiculous. But you can tell, like it was written to be that way. Like it wasn't, it was, wasn't taking itself too seriously. Um, but overall, like I think the the, the movie is really well, really well done. Like I had a lot of fun watching it. Um, unlike some of the sequels to Transformers. So if you're thinking about, hey, should I go and see Transformers? And if you're a Transformers fan from a, your your childhood, you're gonna love it. Um, if you like the Michael Bay movies and you like the crazy bullshit of that type of film, you may not like it as much. So, so you like Michael Bay, crazy. you're into no plot, right? Okay, effects. You're into effects. Boom, boom, right. boom. <laughs> but they, they they did a really nice job with this one, and I was I was impressed. And I was I I, I, I had even like kind of gave up on Transformers after the first one. I think I saw the second one, but it's like, okay, I'm just too old for this yeah, stuff. Yeah, the second one wasn't too bad. The third one was where I went, no, nah, I'm done. No, actually, yeah. I thought the third one was better than the second one. The second one had some huge plot holes, like the parents yeah. all of a sudden get like transported all of You're like, what the hell? How did they get to Egypt? I, li- I like the first one. 
Yeah. Um, I started to say when, yeah, uh, yeah, when Chris, when Chris uh, was talking about being teleported back to his childhood, I know I've said this before, like uh, when we talk, we've talked about this a long, long time ago. Yeah. Like I am basically dead inside. Like a lot of people. Uh, and I've heard this. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, people I mean, say that about you. Yeah, go no, ahead. I said it about myself. No, 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 no uh, you're not dead inside. But same thing. Like when the first hey, Transformers film came out, it had been 20 years since I had even thought about Transformers. You know, uh, you know, and to hear Optimus Prime's voice for the first time since I was a kid. Did you cheer up? Yeah, I did. That was the first time I, 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 yeah, I, I did too. I did too. Because it was just like All right, just, I, everything came rushing back, you know. Yeah. And it's like, I, and I, 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 I publicly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I challenge anyone born in the early eighties, late seventies, who did not tear up the first time they heard Optimus Prime. Okay, I was born in the sixties. We weren't allowed to tear up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So think Lone Ranger. You know, like yeah. Once, yeah. So the first, I thought, you the first thing I thought, Nick, when I when I when I saw that that. I, I thought immediately back to Transformers the movie where mm-hmm. you're taught as a child to duel with grief at a really early age. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. early on in the movie. Yes, you are. I mean um, I grew I grew up you're watching Brian's song and you're like people are looking, Don't you tear up Are you tearing up? No, no, no. Really, no, really quick, no though, I'm not like, crying, I'm a man. In in that battle on uh, Cybertron, the opening scene <laughs> Um, that's the biggest special effect, obviously, is all special effects. Um, but Spoiler. there are some villains that you haven't seen yet in a Transformers oh. movie that you wish you did. And it's like I, I was watching that scene and I had it, the movie had just started and I stopped and I realized I actually had a huge smile on my face, even though it was a destruction of Cybertron. Of the home planet of the Transformers, but like, like there was some serious n- nostalgia happening of all these characters that you haven't seen since you were a kid. It was awesome. I really, really enjoyed. It. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jack still cries when when Bambi dies or her mom dies. No, you don't cry. Yeah, you cry. You, you cry when old Yellow gets shot. You, you, want you, you want something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. Dean That's- Spanos. That fuck uh, you, Dean Spanos. <laughs> fucking well, Chargers. Cindy and I went to see on New Year's New Year's. Uh, Eve, we went. And, we were going to go to uh, Ruth Chris. We said, "Okay, we can't afford it. Yeah, I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to skip the pork chop this year. I got to yeah. skip it." But uh, we went and saw, went to what's it? Alamo? What's the theater? Alamo Draft, Draft House. Draft, Draft House. Yeah. And she had never been there. Jay had taken me there to watch Mission Impossible. I go. She goes. I know. We can eat. They bring you the food. That she goes. What? I go. They bring you drinks. They bring you. So we just had a good old time having. But we went and saw the Mule with Clint Eastwood. Oh yeah. yeah now you want to talk? You're talking about your childhood, dude. Oh my God! Up this this computer thing, this computer. I'm talking about Clint Eastwood, who was who was the man. He he, he Clint Eastwood was the guy. He's did the good, you, the bad, the ugly. Up when he talked, well, you, you know, he's Who's here, aged he, almost as well as Richard Grieco. Okay, be, oh, hold on a second. Oh, no, he's old. Like, he's very. He old. looks he's like, like shit. He's like okay. It's fuck. It's Clint Eastwood, buddy. It's Clint Eastwood. <laughs> he is gonna like rip through the screen at you. Chris. Yeah, it's, you're talking about my hero, but I but I'm watching it going because uh, I you know I. I remember Clint Eastwood as, you know, any which way you can or any which way the loose and, you know, uh, Dirty you know, Harry, Dirty Harry, where he's just kicking everybody's ass. I mean, you don't fuck with Clint. You just don't fuck with Clint Eastwood. You don't. He's he's the guy that line of fire. One of my favorite movies. An, an, anti-hero guy. He's just the, you know, the first Dirty Harry where he just, um, you know, I'm all broken about his rights and stuff because he's, you know, he's, where's the girl? If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. But he, he but you watch this movie, The Mule, and you're like going. Oh my God! When did Clint Eastwood become a hundred years old? <laughs> I mean, it's like I was like, oh my God! But I got to be honest with you. It, it, once you get past, it's Clint Eastwood at a hundred years old. And he's barely walking, and he's oh, having yeah. trouble talking, and he's 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 not saying go ahead and make my day because he can't. Well, think about uh, Jack. He's he's probably what at least twenty seven years older than you. I mean, he's 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 eighty. I think I looked up. He's eighty eight. Yeah, he's eighty seven or eighty eight. Oh. So he's born but, 32, yeah. So he's 30, 30 years older, yeah. But you, you take look, my pacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> but you know he's getting threatened by he's getting threatened by people. Spoiler: alert, He's getting threatened by people, and he's just you know he's not fighting back. You, Clint, kick his ass! Kick his ass, Clint! <laughs> Shoot him! Shoot him! But he doesn't do that because it's it's well, it's not in the script. But he's he's Bradley Cooper's in the movie. 
I didn't know he was in the movie. He was in the movie. He did the clean. Yeah, fuck forbidden. that guy. Fuck Bradley Cooper. Why do you hate Bradley Cooper? Because here's a couple of reasons. Number one, why do you hate Bradley Cooper? <laughs> like here, here's the deal. Like he's already fucking devastatingly handsome. So fuck you. You, 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 they had you put it in there. <laughs> a little something for the ladies, right? No, num- number two, like. <laughs> so if you're not if you're not already like a, a like a famous actor who's made a ton of money and you're already like genetically devastatingly handsome for fuck you for that and you ha- and you um, have a great personality and you say you know what I'm gonna write a movie that's about a country music singer so yeah. fuck you you're hey. devastatingly handsome well that was a you remake a it's a remake it's a twice whatever remake. whatever whatever yeah. it, it keeps going it keeps going <laughs> not only do you do that you, you you actually fucking teach yourself how to play fucking guitar not so um. Hard. He was Pretty great well. the hangover. And and then if that's not enough, you you win like a Grammy or some shit for the song that you write for the movie that you just learned how to play guitar for. So you're you're a super successful actor. Good for you. You worked hard well, for that. Isn't he but a you're fan? devastatingly handsome. You you didn't earn that. that is he, the, isn't he a jet is he a Jets fan? You can teach yourself how to play guitar, write he was a song, the movie. make Excelsior. Lady Gaga an award winning singer and for that for that movie and and just screw you. Wow. So anyway, you know it's funny. Like, Bradley Cooper's in this movie. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys are this way either, but like I, I, love tend, I tend to associate yes. people with the first movie I've ever seen them in. Hangover. And so, uh, oh, actually, no, uh, uh, no, Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers. So yeah. he plays That's that he's a complete dick. Dick. He's a dick in Wedding Crashers. Yeah. Wedding Crashers. And so I always associate Bradley Cooper with the complete dick from Wedding Crashers. But you know what? I used to do. I I do that with a lot of actors. But he's since he's so talented, as Chris has pointed out, you you forget about it because he well, Clint Eastwood directed him in that Sniper where he was a sniper. Right? Oh yeah, that was a good movie. Which was an excellent movie. It just I mean, I'll be honest with you. All right, I teared up, but it was in the movie theater when they're at the end where they're having the uh, the actual footage mm-hmm. of the uh, you know they're having the well I won't spoil the funeral procession. There you go. But I, I did tear up in that one because well, well it was real. He wasn't a transformer guy, but I uh, <laughs> he's he's a real guy, Jack Peter Weller. Right now, that's Robocop. But the <laughs> <laughs> but the mule. But that's a, Peter Weller. I, I always see him as the as Robocop. But uh, the mule. Going into- what else has he been in? <laughs> <laughs> he was in Sons of Anarchy. He was in RoboCop 2. And 3. And <laughs> Okay, he was actually in RoboCop. And you wonder why. <laughs> what happens with these guys? How come they cannot get any work? Oh, don't start us on that trick. But anyway, so The Mule. It, you yeah. get, if you haven't, if you don't know, if you're not a fan of Clint Eastwood from Rawhide and all the different stuff and all Bridges those things. Bridges of Madison County. Oh, and... fuck that. I, I, I refuse to watch Bridges. I, I, I said, no, Clint, I am done. I will. I've seen every one of your movies, but I will not watch Bridges of Madison County. I, did, I didn't watch that. I, I don't care. That was the one with Meryl Streep, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I said, screw you. I'm not watching it. I've never seen it. I, does he shoot anybody? Yeah, with a camera. Does he no? Does he kick anybody's he's a, ass? He's a, he's does he kick anybody's ass? Does he kick anybody's ass? Does he dive in front of a bullet? Yeah, yeah. he kicks Meryl <laughs> Streep's husband ass because he like basically falls in love with her. Anyway, but did he physically kick his ass? You know a movie that I saw. No, but anyway, I didn't finish my <laughs> review of the Mule. I I really enjoyed it. It was and Cindy was crying at the end. I go. Are Wait, you which movie is this? The mule. The mule. Oh, the mule. I, right, right. Well, what it, what it is? He's he's a he's a he grows flowers for a living, and he's never he's never been a real thing. I thought it was I thought it was more. And again, okay, all right. And you yeah. won't watch Bridges of Madison. <laughs> well, going in, I didn't know anything about it. So he goes, "Hey, you want to watch the mule?" These are my choices with Mary Poppins or the mule. I go, I don't want to see Mary Poppins. I go, so I, you won't see Bridges of, of Madison County, but you will go to a movie and cry about an eighty eight year old man who grows flowers. Hold on a second. I didn't know the plot. I just said it's Clint Eastwood. I'll go watch. Well, he's a drug runner. Yeah. So right. he can't he even walk. Mule. He can <laughs> hardly speak. He can't hold a gun, but he can grow a fucking tulip. <laughs> he's good at growing tulips. Oh my god. Just, it's the basis, yeah. So yeah. The cocaine's the only thing keeping him up at night. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would. I, I would suggest. I would. I would say go. I give it. Th- I give it three stars out of three. Three crazy hanks. Or I'm sorry. Three thumbs up. Three thumbs up out of four. I thought it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. Well, you missed out on Mary Poppins Returns because that movie, hands down, better than the Mule. 
It didn't do. It didn't do better than Rotten Tomatoes. I looked. It's great. I loved Mary Poppins. People don't like it. People don't like it. Well, I they don't, I don't like Mary Poppins. Emily, Bl- that, Emily that, Blunt was great as Mary Poppins. No, Dick Van Dyke. What's that? Does he, no, do a, he does a cameo, doesn't he? Yeah, there is. Yeah, Dick Van Dyke's in it. Really? Yes, Dick Van Dyke wow, is in it. it. And by the way, he's, he's ninety he's, fucking four. He's older. He's he's he's, he's older than bike, fucking. Bitch. He's older than Clint. It's Mary Poppins. Dick Say Dyke, Mary Poppins. Is Dick Van Dyke dead? Uh, no, it's, it's oh, Jerry Van Dyke guy. He does a dance. Oh. Yeah. He, and, a, and so is uh, um, Angela Lansbury. She's in she's it. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's still and, alive? Yeah. And she's 94. See, I always thought it'd be funny to have Angela Lansbury be on Star Trek. And she comes down and, and, she, and one of the red shirts looks at her and goes, fuck it, I'm dead. <laughs> because her show, you know, Murder She Wrote, someone always died when she was around. That's that's the joke. I thought you know who's not in the new Mary Poppins movie is Julie John Andrews. Andrews. Yon, Yondu, right? So yeah, she, she actually she actually was asked to be in it, and she oh. said no. She yeah. did not want it to take away from uh, Emily Blunt. Correct. Yeah, so, which makes total sense. Well, yeah, she can't sing good. anymore either. Pretty cool move. Yondu is also not yeah. in the new Mary Poppins, which is disappointing. Man, eh, whatever. What's, what's the, just, so the movie's good, is what you're saying. I loved it. Yeah, I mean, it was great to take the kids to see it. The only the only drawback was is got the song stuck in my fucking head like for like about two weeks. Spoon full of sugar. Did they sing that song? No, no, they don't. They don't pull out the old classics. They have brand new songs, um, and uh, they're 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 good. Uh, Lin Manuel uh, Miranda, uh, that plays Jack. He's he's from Hamilton. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, does some some duets with Mary Poppins and uh, Mary Poppins. Yeah, no, there's some some funny. No, okay, you, you've seen both. You've seen both. Yeah. If you had to take your kids to see one Mary Poppins movie, which one would it be? It was original. I haven't seen the well, name. So I don't know. <laughs> I, it's, it's it's none of this. It's it's a simple. I would take her to take them to the original. Or the remake, or the whatever reboot. Well, I mean, I, I think it's, I it's took, the whole. It's not a reboot. Not, 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 what, it's, not what, a reboot. Which, it's a sequel. Which, if there's no. If there's no having to give an answer. It's it's it's. I would take them to the Julie Andrews one or the Emily Blunt one. Which one do you take them to? I refuse to answer and play your. That, that's, that's, that's that's bullshit. I'll answer it. No, I'll answer bullshit. it. I would take my daughter, which we I didn't, but my wife already did, and I would stand by this. I would still do the Emily Blunt first. And here's why. I'm going to give it the the Rogue One treatment. Mm. Right? I think Rogue One is a phenomenal way to get someone who's never mm-hmm. seen a Star Wars film into a, a theater or into a seat and watch it on, on TV um, because it's relatable. It's up to date. Yeah. It's something that people can kind of watch and not so feel this, like they're so going to Chris, time Chris I will stand by you. So this Mary, this, this, Mary, this, you. this Mary Poppins takes his present day. No, it doesn't take play, place present day, but it is a sequel and takes place uh, like uh, you know so many years after the original because the kids from the original are grown up. Yeah. So, so you know, the sequel from well, they're kids from the original are older than me. Well, it's not. <laughs> they don't take the original <laughs> actors. They're older um, than Clint Eastwood. So, but uh, but to Chris's point though, um, it is. It was a, a, a you know, although my daughter had seen the original Mary Poppins, she doesn't remember it from when she was four. This was a better way to introduce her to um, the movie. And yeah, like they kept well, after, after the seeing this, did they want to watch the original? We did watch yes. the original. Okay. We did watch. So the original. my daughter is now asking yeah. to see the original. Yeah. Yeah. With your, with your rogue one. It's funny. I've, I got a lot of shit um, after rogue one came out saying that I think I would introduce star Wars to people who had never seen it by, Giving watching them make Rogue One first, and people were like, "You can't do that. You have to start with a New Hope." It was like, but it makes sense to show Rogue One first, even yeah. though the first act is not that strong. From there on, it's it's well. I, I always said with the leftovers, I said anyone who hadn't seen season one, I go just watch season two, season three, and then go back. And people get pissed. They how can you do that? I go because if they start off with season one, they're probably going to give up on it. I don't know if a show is good or a movie's good. It's going to connect to the to the previous stuff. That happened with me with Battlestar Galactica. I jumped in season two, and I loved it. And then it made me want to go back and watch season one. Just as strong, it was mm-hmm. just as strong of a show. And uh, you mean so you 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 watched the original Battlestar Galactica? No, no, I I, I meant the new BSG. So oh, I'm I'm talking. 
I, I didn't. I didn't get your point. There's, there's no reason to go back and watch the original Battlestar. Galactica. The original does not hold up. No, I mean, come but on. But, just but whoa, 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 time, 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 time out, time out, time now, out. Time out. Now, Battlestar Galactica, 1980. Now that one holds up. Oh, yeah, okay, that that, <laughs> that's absolutely terrible. But no, the the the, the, abs, the, the original. Basically, they take a lot of the plots from the original and feed it and into make them PSG. better. Exactly. I'm not saying they, I'm not saying they didn't make it better. But the only thing Chris and I are on the same point with tonight. I mean, okay, you know, with, football aside, without you know, without we're on the same without page. BS, without Battlestar Galactica, you have no BSG. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But without right, Hydrox, so- without without Hydrox, you don't have Oreo. So you know, I don't, I don't care. Chocolate cookie with cream in the middle. Yeah, the metaphor the works. It doesn't work because I, I don't care either way. It totally uh, works. Speaking of, someone brought some mega stuff Oreos in the other day. Mm. Oh, oh, so it's, good. It's too much. I, I stick with the original. I stick no. with the original. No way. So you, uh, you go the, home and you watch the the original the, Battlestar Galactic. Tell tell me when when I've you, seen the, the I've seen I've seen the original. I, I've yeah, watched I, have, it. I rewatched it. Yeah, I sorry, my reel to reel machine is fucking broken. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, it's on. It was on. I watched it about two years ago. I watched the original. Like the yeah, whole, that, the whole that, thing. The whole. It's only one season. It's not well, like you it's could a, download not like the entire it. series in four megabytes for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's a. It's a huge. It's a huge. But you know, you go back and look at that, and you know, sure, the women that were the characters on the original Battlestar Galactica were more eye candy, but they did have strong female characters, and then we're talking back in the 70s, 78. So it did have. Strong character, female characters, not as probably strong as BSG. All right, right who's or, a better Starbuck? Huh? Who's a better Starbuck? Uh, I can't really compare. Oh uh, yeah. Sure. Well, I like Dirk Benedict, but you got to go with uh, you got to go with uh, Katie Shackoff. She, she yeah, knocked him out of the park. Yeah, she, she was. She, she, I mean, I'll be honest. When Hands I first down, when I first started watching it, my first reaction was like, "I was a Jay's. Like, you got to watch Battlestar Galactica. You go watch." I go, "I don't know if I'm gonna like it. I love the original. I was a kid. I loved it." And so I'm watching, I go, wait, Starbucks a girl? Boomer's a girl? What the I'm fuck a, are they doing here? I'm attracted to these people now? <laughs> well, I can't I'd, make I'd, rather watch, I'd rather watch Face in Space. Dirk Benedict was kind of hot, too. Let's just be honest with you. But anyway, but I... But I, I <laughs> Dirk Benedict was like the Bradley Cooper of the 70s and 80s. Like, screw that guy. <laughs> Not only that, but he, doesn't he play him in the A-team? He plays he, Face he, in yeah, the A-team. Face. That's what I'm saying, Face yeah. in Space. Yeah, but I, uh, I, but I, I love Battle, Battlestar Galactica is in my top five shows of all time. I mean, BS. I'm sorry, BSG. The yeah. original or the newer? No, the new one. Okay, uh, then I rest <laughs> my case because you're not putting Battlestar Galactica 1978 on your top best. But it's something I think if you uh, you to appreciate BSG, I think you have to watch Battlestar Galactica because. It, it's like a fine wine; it just ferments over time. But but if you if you see if you see it, if you smell see the seventies, oh, that's where they came up with that. Oh, that's where they came. No, they, yeah, I know what you're right, saying, Jack. Jack I I, saying. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to throw you a wrench here. Do you have to watch the original Mash movie to appreciate Mash the series? It's not, it's, it's not even the same. See, Ooh. but you but it's, without but it's, the Mash movie, you don't have the Mash series. But okay, but but hold on a second. Uh-huh. I've watched them both and enjoy both. Yeah. That's yeah. not the question. Because the, the MASH the movie is not really – it's a dramedy, not a comedy. Whereas MASH the, the TV show really didn't become a dramedy until later on in, in- – Hey, yeah. to go full circle on movies yeah. and move past this bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this and, and, Brad, bullshit. and Bradley Cooper was not in any I will say that episodes. Bumblebee is a good Rogue One to, to, to Terminator or to Terminator. To Terminator. <laughs> to Terminator. <laughs> to Terminator. I love that. I love yeah. Bumblebee yeah. just goes psycho on people. <laughs> Bumblebee, Bumblebee is, a, is a good Rogue One to Transformers, uh, the first Michael Bay movie. That's, what I, that's how I was going to assume it would be, yeah. yeah. So we're going from classic movies to – Bumblebee. Classic cartoons made hey, into movies. Well, since I, there's something. Like, all right, since we're still in movie, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my five minutes now. Or yeah, one you, minute. you do. So um, it's your birthday. You got, I went, you I got went, a full I six went, minutes without being interrupted. I went to see a movie as well. I don't know. I, I your, your birthday during nice. the previews. Uh, I want to talk about Bumblebee for one second. Um, well, I saw previews for Bumblebee, and my dad's sitting right next to me. We're in one of these like really comfy like leather chairs and recliners theaters I hadn't been to. I was like, "This is nice." And so he's looking at the Bumblebee previews, and he looks at me, and he goes, "But Bumblebee's a Camaro." And I look at him like, "Oh, bless your heart." It's you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, "No, Dad." Like, 
<laughs> he's upset that he's a Volkswagen. Yeah, like he's like, what, what, what? everyone knows Bobby's a Camaro. I'm like, it's not American. <laughs> no, he's not, Dad. I, I don't know about you, but the previews used to, be, used to be the best part of going to the movies. And I used to I always put my thumb up like this or down when I sit next to my wife. She, so, yeah, we're going to go see this or no, we're not. Yeah, thumb yeah. Never, we watched like four or five previews and the thumb never went up. I'm like, oh. going, what the fuck is this? Yeah. What, what are they I mean, doing here? I mean, this is just crap. I was have they, have they, they just run out of fucking ideas. I was slightly disturbed by Captain Marvel's. Uh, I didn't see the previews for that. It's it's she's it's like she's, she's beating an old woman's face. Oh, in. that yeah. Well, she's a change, but like, I'm more disturbed that <laughs> she looks bored in every she looks single. Bored. She Wait, looks bored. Would have been, 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 been better if she was beating Bradley Cooper's face in. <laughs> At least it would be a man and not an oh. old woman. Oh. Midnight Me Train. Fantastic horror B movie by uh Bradley Cooper. Check it out. Oh. What's that about? My secret love for Bradley Cooper. Oh. oh. <laughs> Midnight Midnight Meat Train. Check Maybe it out. Maybe we get Bradley Cooper on the show. What do you think? Yeah, you work on that, Jack. I'll work I'll start working on that. We couldn't get I'm, I'm gonna Bumble work on getting Bumblebee on, on the show. <laughs> Nothing. How we get Bradley Cooper on the show? I'm sorry. I'm I'm Richard Grieco. I'm too busy. <laughs> but uh, the movie I went and saw was uh, the Spider Verse. Spider Man into oh, the yeah. Spider Verse. Good thing about that with my nephew. And yeah, I think for a cartoon, it's a a little just a tad long, but it is actually entertaining and um, it's very impressive uh, to to watch. So right. it, it deserve, deserves the love it's getting. Yeah, it does. Um, it, nice. it it does throw you off a bit because like if you go into it not knowing anything whatsoever about it, you're kind of like, what? Like what's <laughs> going on here? And then you're like, oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, it, it's good. It's entertaining. Uh, hey, have any guys seen Aquaman yet? I did. I I yeah. want to see it because I like the actor. Aqua. It's definitely hands down the best DC film. This DC better done. than Wonder Woman. The thing about all right, Wonder Woman to me, Wonder Woman's ex. I, 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 I really enjoyed Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, I, I mean, I and, and hold on a second. I hate to keep interrupting you, <laughs> but I also enjoyed the original TV show Wonder Woman. There you of go. Course, of course, you did. Okay. Yeah. There was no spinning in Wonder Woman, and that's what made me give it a little bit negative review. No. Wonder uh, Woman. Uh, no, I think the first act of Wonder Woman is solid, and even the second act is decent. The third act with the whole revealing of the villain and everything, I, I just, I, it doesn't hold up to me. You didn't like the Scooby Doo reveal? Yeah, that's what I didn't like. Um, all right, all right, but back, back on track though. Back on track. Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. Oh, we talking about Aquaman. Aquaman is another movie where it could have used a bit of editing, um, but it's definitely the best DC. They're the only thing to me that is corn better, better than Wonder Woman. It, they're about the same. But the 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 only thing that's really like cheesy, cheesy Power Ranger level cheesy is uh, the Black Mantis. And when he is revealed, <laughs> you're, you're like, "Are you serious?" That you know, and it, it, you're like, it is, and, but it is good to me, the story wise, plot wise, because you guys know I'm a plot guy. It is, it's 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 the exact same story as Black Panther, except in reverse. Yeah, um, and. That's where I kind of was like, okay, it's it's a good movie, but it's like, okay, you're not really impressing me much. But it, I, now, good. what about do you have to watch the the prequel um, before you see Aquaman? You mean like Waterboy? Waterboy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, okay. Patrick Patrick Duffy started the seventies as 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 Aquaman, so or it was like Man from Atlantis or something like that. So I think he was he was Aquaman. Well, there was a a pilot. It wasn't on very long. There was a pilot that was shot for um, what do you call it? Um, Smallville. D- CW. Yeah, oh, no, it yeah. was it was it was that universe Aquaman, right. um, with the guy who played I can't remember his name. He played the Green Arrow in Smallville. <sighs> yeah, I, d- I don't know, but I do remember them introducing Aquaman and and uh, the CW uh, uh, Smallville. So, so they they did they shot a and you can, I think you can find it on iTunes. Um, it was like the campy, you know, CW freak of the week type of uh, TV show. Um, but it was like Smallville for, for Aquaman. I think they actually, they shot that, 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 um, that, what do you call it? What, what do you call it? They shot the, the pilot for that show and then it didn't get picked up. And I think then he then got the role as the Green Arrow on Smallville. Um, oh, okay. 
but it, it, I actually I I dug it. Um, who, Ving Rames was in it, like uh, that dude who Green Arrow was in it. A couple other people were like they're fairly like B level, C level actors who were on it. Um, but I, I actually enjoyed the I enjoyed the pilot. I thought it was actually kind of fun, and they never picked it up. Yeah, I was excited when I heard rumors about that. I don't know why. I I, I mean, it's not like I'm a huge Aquaman fan. It's like, I mean, I do have a couple tattoos, but you know. Uh... <laughs> so you did see the Aquaman movie, though, Chris? No, not yet. Not oh, yet. Okay. You will definitely um, Aquaman's dad when you when like he's like one of the first things you ever see in the movie, and and throughout the movie in some ways you'll be like, man, uh, Jango Fett did not age well. Oh really? Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, because my dad and my brother and I kept going. I know that guy. I know that guy. I'm like it's it's Django, Django Fett. Fett. It's Django no Fett. Way. And you're like, oh. Why, why, why do we care so much about how people age? Well, I mean, it makes sense though. He, <laughs> I don't know how old, he was. He was older even when he did Django Fett, so it makes sense that he's older right. now. Well, I want to see it now just because I've heard good reviews about it. And yes, I've like, heard. I like him on the. I've, show, I've only heard one here. bad review, and I don't necessarily trust it. So. Is it, is it mine? No. <laughs> it's the best DC movie. <laughs> it's better than Wonder Woman. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's on par with Wonder Woman, I think. Like like I said, it just needed a little the bit TV, of... The TV show or the Wonder movie? Woman. Hmm? The TV show I, or the movie? Yeah, they're about, about the same. Yeah. I, I fucking loved the Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman movie. It's act, Wonder Woman is in my top three superhero movies. I remember yeah. when we talked about you saying you really, yeah. really liked it. I, I mean, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I watched it on a plane going to San Diego, and I thought it was very good. I did. Anywho, I did have a, I did have a question for you guys. Um, my na- next door neighbor, he does like during the football season. He ha- he has like all these TVs in his garage, and he has parties going on and stuff like that. And he's invited me over a couple times. But I said, eh, I, don't know. I can't. I'll pass. But he, he's a big cowboy fan. So the other night he had, you know, they, they played the Seahawks. So he had all these people. And some guy shows up in an electric golf cart. And then, so I'm driving, uh, Cindy and I are driving somewhere, well, we were driving somewhere last night. And I turned over and I said, someone drove on our lawn. And she, hmm. this is at night. I could see it at night. And she goes, oh, I thought you were talking about the bricks. I go, because we have these, I might have heard me complain about before about the bricks around our mailbox that people just run into and, and, uh, and then smash them all over the place. And it just pisses me off. I'm going to put spikes in them. So I'm like going, so we came home last night. Oh, it was last night we were going to, I, she was going to see Justin Timberlake and I was going to babysit. And so I came home. So I'm one thirty at night. I'm, I'm looking at our, I said, okay, it was the golf cart. She goes, how do you know? I go, there was a golf cart here and that's golf cart tracks. But we have a camera now. We have a, that uh, nest thing, the doorbell nest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So last night I spent uh, about an hour trying to figure out if it was the golf cart. So the golf cart, he drives up, he must have been just shit face drunk, and goes right over the bricks, just knocks them all over the place, and just keeps going all the way home. <laughs> and I'm like going, that fucker. So now I'm going to try and find out, should I find out, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the neighbor. Say, you know, hey, I'm not going to try and be a dick here tonight. You know, you guys take up, like, you, you, our street is very narrow, and sometimes you can't get through because it's so narrow, but I'm a, nice, I'm a good neighbor. Should I go up to the neighbor and say, hey, who is the asshole driving the red cart? Because I don't want him cutting through my grass. Number one, number two, he just destroyed my property and just kept. It didn't. Just said, "Fuck it." Hmm? Am I wrong? So, uh, who, who, yeah, who, whose cart is it? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's one of the guys. Oh. He, he has like, it's like thirty people come over to. They, they have parties every night. They're they're great neighbors though. I mean, I, I get along with them great. But with, they they have a lot of parties. But the guy, the problem with the guy in the golf cart, he was parked on the side of his lawn, the the neighbor's lawn. Well, there were so many cars, he couldn't back up. So the only way out was to go across my lawn, which is, uh, which is bullshit. Yeah. And then he, he but he, he I, I probably wouldn't have cared so much there, but he slammed and just, and just knocked the bricks all over the place. Just it's knocked simple. them all over. It's simple. You go to the neighbor, like, hey, whoever has a red golf cart drove over my yard and shit all over my bricks. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm, gonna ask the they say. I'm gonna ask the neighbors. Like, yeah. who, just see, who? no, don't don't even ask them. Just see what they say. See what, throw it out there and gauge the reaction. Yeah. Because the neighbors are gonna do one of two things. Number one, they're gonna right, be yeah. completely sorry and oh, oh hey, I did that. Blah blah blah. And we'll yeah. fix it. 
Mm. Or B, be like, oh, that was fucking Jimmy. That guy can't hold his liquor. I'll make right. sure he doesn't pull that shit anymore. <laughs> well, my wife you know, goes, you're going to. And you don't have to ask them to do anything. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll do something. My wife would say, go, you're going to go confront a neighbor? I go, it's just it's just a lack of respect. To me, it's just, it's, I go, yeah, you were drunk. You fucked up. You went across. First of all, I wouldn't do that to your lawn. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go across your property. Number one, I wouldn't do it. Number two, if I fucked up your bricks, I would have stopped and picked them up and put them back. I'm going to, I'm going to cement them in. I'm going to, I finally Well, the other thing too, you know, you, you could just build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need someone else to pay for it. Okay. And no well, maybe you're fucking Jimmy who can't hold his liquor. <laughs> Jimmy. Fucking Jimmy. I, but I, I, but my wife was like going, you know, we have to live here. Don't be a dick. I go, I'm not going to be a dick. I go, but it just literally, it was like 3.30 in the morning. It was 3.30 last night. I go, there it is. There's his cart going across the thing. He comes flying across. He goes <laughs> flying through the bricks. And I, he, the cart lifted up. I don't know how he didn't tip over. He spins around, then he drives up the street. I go, never once fucking stop. At least put a note there saying, hey, I, I was drunk. I fucked up your bricks. See, I, I think I think you're both right. Cindy says, "Don't be a dick." Nope, don't be a dick. That doesn't get you anywhere. It's hard for situation. me. It's hard for me not to be a dick. In this but situation. you need to resolve it. And I think you, just by presenting, "Hey, man, who's your name? What's your neighbor's first name?" Uh, it's Robbie. Is our, my next door neighbor's name. Robbie. It was Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Somebody from your house in a red yeah, but, golf. But it was cart. it was someone at his party. Yeah, someone at your party in a red golf cart just dismantled my front yard. Just want to give you a heads up. I don't know if you know who that is. And just float it out there and let Robbie take care of it. I, I think this is what I, I, I think. Can I, I think can, you, well, you know, Cleese was weird. He just shoot him. That's no, what I was about to say. He wouldn't do anything. He would have potted a goddamn plant. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just shit all over my joke. I was about to say. I'm sorry, Nick. Go ahead. Yeah, it was like, you guys are what's wrong with America. Because what would Clint do? That's what I was gonna say. It's like, what would younger Clint do? Cause, yeah, because you, you have to be subtle about it. You need to go to the neighbor and be like, "Hey, man, like, there's a really cool guy on a red golf cart. Do you know where this guy lives?" And like, the guy's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, that's that's Mikey. You know, he lives like on um, blah, blah, Elm Street." And you're like, "Oh, cool." Then you need to go full on. I know what you did last summer on the guy. <laughs> and like, like that. Leave notes. You know, like just like random stuff. The guy has no idea what's going on. And you, you could be nice about it too. You could like send him a. Why, why do I have to be nice? Why do well, I? Have it's to like a little bit of that? nice and a little bit of mean. What, what what poison in it? No, just like a fruit basket that says why I know I, what why, you did. Why, why am I sending this fucker a fruit basket? Why am I wasting my money sending this fucker who ruined my bricks <laughs> a fucking? Fruit? You know, oh, I think, I think, you I know, know what I, you I, could I, do is just put a note on the brick and then throw it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Here, you they won't, they won't know it's you. <laughs> now you're now you're talking. Now you're talking. I, I, um, more I like Cl- I think, to find I, a middle ground. I here. think like more like Nick. I just I, I just go up to him and go go ahead, make my day. Yeah. Or just I, like I, I think that's what I do. You need to download the video. You know, I'm, I'm have it on Chris, your phone. So walk up, knock on the door, but hey, uh, let me show you this really cool video. Oh, there's <laughs> that. Like, hey, fucker, was that you? <laughs> uh, you have a neighborhood Facebook group. You can just post it on. Oh, I do. Hey, fucker! Do you like ladies? Slippers? Yeah, you- <laughs> <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> there, there you go. That's when Clint was still tough. Grand yeah. Torino. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, he should have uh, okay. stopped with Grand Torino. That's one of the crazy ones, though. Is like anyone who's <laughs> ever driven a Grand Torino knows that you would hate driving a Grand Torino. I used to. I used to. I my first car. My parents gave me a Grand Torino. Really? Those things are so. It was. It, 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 it's it's well. It was. Star- I was gonna make it like Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, the, the red tomato. Uh, but I just. I. It, but then the, the gas wars hit, and we had odd and even, and it was gas went up to like seventy eight cents a gallon. I said, "Fuck, I can't afford this car." Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're, 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 the bush years. <laughs> no, seventy eight cents a gallon back then when you were making a dollar. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I was no, making a dollar. Saying, you know, been away with the dollar fifteen. It was up to four dollars. That was nightmarish. But yeah, yeah. yeah but this was seventy eight cents plus. You had you can only get gas on like depending on your license plate. Oh right. You, you could only pick, and there were there were gas lines and stuff. It was it was a nightmare. I, I heard about those gas lines. They were it was tough. It was tough. But anyway, so uh, I forget what I was saying. Oh, but no, the Grand Torino. But the worst part was I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and this was back before you had to wear seatbelts. I mean, I don't think I don't even know if the car had seatbelts, but it had vinyl seats. And so he worked in Kentucky Fried Chicken. I worked in the back. I was covered just head to toe in grease. 
So I'd get, I'd get in the car, and then when I turn, I'd literally slide <laughs> this way. Whatever I was turning, that's the direction I would slide because I was, and I'd have to come home and I had to wipe it. So finally, I got like towels and put them in there, and then because I, I immediately had to come home and shower because I was just. You had, yeah. a, ben- you had a bench front seat. I did. I did. It was, hey, it was baby, one straight seat. Out my Gran Torino has got <laughs> grease all over it. The Gran Torino, though, is if you fix it up, it's a nice looking. I mean, the Grant in the movie Gran Torino, that was a nice looking car. I was, yeah. He took care of it, yeah. Yeah, and Starskin Hutch. That is that's that's a sweet looking ride. So was Bumblebee. That's a fake movie. <laughs> but we do have an e- we do have an email. Oh, we do. You ready to get to that? Yeah. It's from Desiree, and she does want a drawing. I don't know if Matt has a drawing for her. I did work on a drawing today, Desiree. It is uh, it is bird box themed. Um, oh, I what did okay before we go on to the bird box? Yes or no? Didn't see it. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, the only review I needed to read was it's a quiet place with blindfolds. It (laughs) it, it is. It is. But I I did enjoy it. Yeah, I liked it. I I like those type of doom and gloom. And, you know, it's funny. I don't want to spoil people on the ending. But I did say at one point about halfway through the movie, you know, if you were this, it'd be the perfect place to live in. If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, to not spoil anyone either, but my review that I, or, you know, on your review, basically, uh, Jack, on your posting, I had, I had made a comment uh, that how it played off of certain successes that The Walking Dead has had uh, as far as yeah. putting kids in, in danger. Right. Uh, Look and, at the flowers. Oh, Look my the- gosh. Like, the whole time, I'm just like, I couldn't tear myself away, like being a parent, because it just it put me in this uncomfortable position. Well, that well, that was the worst part when, when, when they're going down the river. Yeah, he's talking to the two kids, and she says, "Okay, one of you are gonna have to." Yeah, I don't want oh, to. Yeah, and you're like going, "Oh my, how do you make that decision?" And I but, knew, I, I figured out, early, I figured out early on who the two kids were. Oh yeah. But how she resolves it, though, I mean, it's yeah, like it's really it, sweet and tender, and, and but how she but pulls because, up the heartstrings because the way they play it out in the beginning, she, the, they open the scene is she's literally laying into these kids, and she's not sugar. It's oh. not today. It's not. It's not would be today's kids where you go, okay, you can get a cookie. No, she's literally telling them the facts of yeah. life that you know you do not take these blindfolds yeah. off. You will She'll fucking die. If you yeah. Know. Yeah, no, it's 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 intense. Well, anyway, my my uh, it's 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 not really quite bird box themed, but it is a bird. Uh, it's, not, it's nice, Desiree. I hope you like it. If not, uh, you know what? If Desiree doesn't like it, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 John uh, from um, the uh, the post office or the UPS John from Houston. No, oh, no, no, John from uh, from San Francisco. Yeah, I, I promise I will get yours out to you in the mail. I do have it completed, um, and it was something that I actually completed uh, on my holiday. Here is this acid trippy uh, landscape. That's, that's um, pretty cool. Yeah, so I finished that on my uh, on our hiatus here. So I will get that in the mail to you. I've been meaning to uh, postmark that. So, don't you still uh, have the privileges at the post office? You just walk right up. No, I mean this is just this is just I, I put in the mailbox. I know I'm just giving you a hard okay, time. Yeah, stop giving me shit, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, this is from Desiree. First of all, Jack, sorry about the small print last email. I was just a bit upset and didn't think about it. I also need large print for my old ass eyes. Hopefully, this will help. It's better, Desiree, but it's still not quite up to. It's it's it's, it's all right. It needs it's, it's, eighteen font. Well, it's better than the three font you had last time where basically I needed a magnifying glass to see the print. But I'm not complaining. I'm just happy when someone sent us an email. Put the next one in wing dings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, you've, if, you've, if you've seen the Clint Eastwood, new Clint Eastwood movie, you know that I need larger prints. Okay, let's just say that. Uh, a few things to follow up. First of all, Matt. Oh, shit. Matt. Remember, this email started off pretty kind of angry. Right. I would I love a drawing. I would include my address for you. And thank you. Also for Matt. I hope that when you had a conversation with your daughter and empowered her to say no, you empowered her to say yes, not just to sex. I know she's not ready for that, but for anything she wants to do, but also Hmm. for sex. When she's older, she's, uh, well, okay, Matt, let me stop here. We all, we all, everyone here next has, has daughters. I personally kind of let my wife handle that with my daughters. Except for you know how you be, a, a guy should treat them, 
but the sex part. Sure. I'm, uh, a good person. I mean, you guys might not be old. Your daughters might not be old enough for that. Yeah, my daughter is is uh, not old enough for that. No, no, Chris, your daughter's six, six or seven. She's eight. My daughter is learning how to count money. Yeah. Okay. She's learning how to count money. Okay, but are you are you going to have the talk? Or are you going to let your wife have the talk? That is that is a talk with 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 my wife. Now uh, she is reaching a certain age where we have had certain puberty conversations um, that have gone on because uh, she does have a slightly older cousin um, who is going through that change. Okay. And, uh, so that is that is already on the radar and something that is kind of uh, you know that my wife is. Now the other side of that is is me having conversations with my son mm-hmm. about. Uh, certain things that uh, the cousins like to talk and giggle and, and keep secrets from him. And, and he's just confused because he's like, they're talking in code and he's like, what does this mean? What does the red dragon mean? <laughs> so, and I'm having to like kind of have some, some uh, early puberty talks with him because, because he's, he's way, way not there yet, but he, I, he I know we get into this, this, the sexist thing oh. and, and what should, should it be? But I, like I said, I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Because I know with Jay, I just said, okay, you know, you're, you're going to have sex, but don't be stupid. Have a condom. But I go, you better treat the woman with respect or I'll kick your ass, basically is what I, I – I think that was what my talk was all about. I, I'd i like to be able to be open enough with my daughter to talk to her about um, boys and, and things that are that are coming down the pike. But I also know that uh, she's probably a little bit more embarrassed to talk to dad about some of these things. Yeah. So the nice thing is, is right now we do have this, this window in which when I drop the kids off to school, I drop, drop my son off first. And uh, then my, my daughter and I have a little bit of time in the car together where, where we get to to just kind of be together. And not that I have like deep conversations with her, but we do talk about stuff and um, you know, she knows that I'm, I'm open enough to. Cause I, I know with my oldest daughter, she was closer to me probably up until like 15, 16 Mm-hmm. And then it switched. She went towards my wife. I mean, we're still we have still have a great relationship, but it was more of where she she had a better relationship. I guess maybe because of the, the you know the whole thing. But uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a it's not a subject I felt comfortable talking about. Certain things I didn't feel comfortable talking about. How would Clint talk about it? <laughs> you should have been a son. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, there, I, I will also because you you sent in two emails. I will throw in this extra bonus uh, oh, uh, nice. drawing uh, that I have of uh, it's kind of like atoms, but they're also like snowflakes. And there's like a night sky. So didn't you, Joanne? Didn't Joanne with a plan have to beg for it? No, she didn't. Okay, I'm just, I'm just asking. Sorry. All right, so uh, where was I at in this email? Okay, so Chris, you're gonna you're gonna let your uh, what do you think you're going to do? Oh, you know, it, it, it's, I, I don't think I can answer it, to be honest with you, because I, I, it's not something that I have put a whole lot of thought into because I'm kind of just embracing, you know, being the best dad I can be to to, to empower a six-year-old girl. You know what I mean? Because um, I, 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 oh, go ahead. Live in the I, moment. I, with, I, that, that's that's, that's right how now. I've been doing it. You know, like, I, I'll tell you this, that I, I'm, I'm definitely doing everything in my, in my power to have my daughter feel comfortable being able to talk to me and talk to her mom about anything. Right. Um, and even at the age of six, there are things they feel that they don't feel comfortable talking about. Because it, and that, that at, at six years old, it's not talking about boys. It's not talking about sex. It's not talking about any of that stuff. It's talking about what makes them feel frustrated as a six year old. Yeah. Right? Which to the average adult is a bunch of fucking horseshit. But it's the things that it's, it's the founding or the, the building blocks of what will build up on, you know, a, a child's psyche growing up. And I always just, that, that's, a, I, I took many years of child psychology in college. It's actually part of my major um, before I switched it. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of like kind of recall back to the things I learned in college about, you know, how to, how to relate to and how to kind of communicate with the psyche of a, of, of a kid and the things that kind of drive kids crazy right now is is this the simplest of things but not understanding how they can express how they feel about it not understanding how they can talk about it that's the potential roadblock the potential pitfall for kids so right now i all i'm concerned about really is just trying to make sure that my my daughter is comfortable 
you know, in her own skin and is comfortable being able to discuss things that, that are bothering her, whether that's, you know, like right now she's going through a lot. Like she's gone through switching schools. That's, yeah. that's mm-hmm. probably her biggest. A new house. Her. And, and home. she's and not going to be the only one in the house anymore. And a new Come sibling on the way. February or February shit. No, April. Um, so th- those are the concerns that I'm, um, I'm happy to be a part of trying to, to, to make easier, to make better. Um, when at the same time trying to let her kind of find her own way. Cause a, a six year old girl is still trying to figure out what the hell, you know, gets, gets her excited. You know, what, 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 what she gets excited about what she looks forward to. Like right now, like she's, she started asking if she can, have, cause her birthday is coming up in, in March and she's talking about having wanting to not have a big birthday party, which I thought was kind of weird. You know, and she's like, Oh, I just want to have my, my good friends there and we can hang out. Maybe we can go to five guys and then we can go to Froyo. Like those are the things that actually she really gets excited about, but oh, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm to, to answer your original question, which I've offered way too much, way more than it was asked. But like, I think that when the time comes, I think we're going to do with what's best and what she feels most comfortable of how, of how she should share that information of who she should share it with. Um, just so she feels good about her. Well, I wish I would have talked to you when I was raising my kids because my kids came to me and said, you know, hey, I go, you know, suck it up. Life sucks. <laughs> you know, get over it. You're going to be an adult someday. You're going to fucking pay rent. You're going to pay, pay your fucking bills. Stop. Just come, stop bitching and complaining. No, I'm kidding, of course. No, it's just, uh, it just, you know, it's, it's, it was tough. I mean, it was just, uh, what, you know, used to hurt, what used to hurt me the most is when my kids said they were bullied. Yeah. Mm. When they were when bullied, I could, I just, it just took everything in me not to go because you know as a kid growing up I was bullied quite a bit and took everything because my 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 parents approach was well punch him in the face hit him hit him you know hit him back and you know sometimes it worked and sometimes well you get you got your ass kicked because the person was bigger than you <laughs> but you know but it was it kept everything for me to having to go because I didn't want to talk to going to the parents was a waste of time because the parents are obviously allowing it to happen. Back then, it, it, there, there wasn't that there wasn't that uh, awareness where people said, you know, hey, bullying is, needs to stop, and you need to, it's 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 hurtful. Well, and but, even some parents today, they're like, that's not my kid. My kid yeah, wouldn't do it. And I did get that. Say, so, hey, you know, your kid's kind of picking on my kid, and they go, my kid wouldn't do that. And then you know, it, it was like, my my my, do- my oldest daughter had a really good friend. Something happened, and, and she went to a Catholic private school, and she got basically off, off in this shunned from this this group she was oh, in. Oh, yeah. That's... It, because they, I said, I, it, just, it, it just broke my heart. And yeah. he, my youngest one got picked on and, and Jay got picked. I mean, it, it just, it's part of life and you have to kind of, I don't want to say you have to toughen up. It's a shame you have to be that way. But I, I did tell the kids, like, look, you just have to kind of, you can't let it, you can't let it show them it bugs you. Yeah. Be, because they win. I mean, it's a shame it happens. But that's just the way it is. But I, it took everything I could to go up and just want to punch the kid in the face because, like, you know, can't. yeah, bull- bullying is so much harder now than it was when we were kids. You know, because when we were kids, you, you got bullied at school. You know, you came home. Yeah. Like for me, I, I got picked on every once in a while. So I think everybody gets picked on at one point, right? Yeah. Um, I, I get picked on at school. I come home. I do my paper out. I get to finish doing my papers, and then I hop on my bike and I go hang out and fuck off until 6 30 come home for dinner that was that was yeah. pretty much light but now kids come home from school after getting picked on they pick up their phones they pick up their ipads they go on the computer and they're getting you know shit on on instagram they're getting shit on on twitter or facebook when people don't use facebook anymore but like you know like it never it, just, it, it doesn't stop but caveat to what i mentioned what i mentioned before i i kind of just gave like a whole rundown of my philosophy <laughs> on like how i want my kid whatever to to be able to express themselves um, I say that knowing that I don't know shit about parenting at this point. I'm only six years into the game, and I bet you there's probably people listening to this right now being like, "Oh yeah, you're you got some you know rose colored glasses on. You you have no idea what's coming your way," and that's totally true. Like I I don't know. Like I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend. Well, it, some it, it, it is it is a uh, it is it's a it changes almost daily because you. I said we had three kids, and you know it's like okay, you get this one going good, and then. That one has you're like going, oh my god, and then the all three. Yeah. You have, it's like you know you have other issues going on in life. It's just like it's it's tough, and it's like I said, it's a tough world because you have so many assholes out there. Yep. And 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 I don't care how much we we 
we have videos and things saying, don't be an asshole. There's always going to be assholes. I don't, I don't, I don't get, and how, but how do you, how do you protect your child from I'm, the assholes? I'm yeah. I'm more worried at this point about the, uh, the lechers uh, and the, the leers, you know, at my daughter, because she's growing very tall, very fast, looking a lot older than what she is, you know, and it, it that's what we're, you know, as far as me and where my heart is, that's, that's where I'm like, okay, when do I have the talk with her about like, you got to watch out. Like, yeah. Oh. I had a couple, I had a couple times where my, my daughters were, we walked, it was just my daughters and I, we walked into a fast food place and all these guys just turned around, looked at him. And I just turned around, looked back at him, just gave him the look like, fuck you. But then yeah. I was at the rink and this one guy that was working there, or no, one guy that skated there. It's a kid. He was like, he was like 18. And he goes, he says about my youngest daughter, I think 15 or 16. Oh, she's fuckable. Oh, God. And I, and I, I go, I go, what did you just say? He's, uh, I go, that's my fucking daughter. And he, I go, I go, it doesn't matter. I go, that's somebody's daughter. And I just, I go, you know, I should just fucking kick your ass. And I go, if I ever hear you say anything like that again, and I, I, but, but I would have acted that way if it was someone else's daughter. I don't know, probably not. But I, I, I literally took everything I did, could not to kick that kid's ass. I said, "What a fucking dick!" But it is. I don't it look is. forward to this. <laughs> it, 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 is, it, it, it is. You know, you just have. You know, you just have. It just. It is what it is. But anyway, let's finish this email. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but when she's older, she'll be able to have sex life that she enjoys. Yes, no one wants to think of their child having sex. No, you don't. But they event- they do eventually, and we all need to stop being worried about our daughters having sex or being hurt. When we do, don't worry about our sons. If you're not, you're specifically your you're, but your collective human you. Think of your teen son having sex is a great accomplishment, but your teen daughter having sex is something to fear. You are a sexist. This is something we need to change the way society thinks. Uh, also, thank you, Jack, for realizing that you need. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no, no, okay. No, stop for one okay. second. Okay, okay. Uh, no, no. So I, I can't let that one go without having a comment about it. Okay. Um, people, I, I, it, this this might be people's prerogative, but I can't conceivably think of a world in which I would think of my son having sex as an accomplishment. Is that a normal thing? I don't think I jumped up and cheered. At at this point with, with my son, I just want him to grow up healthy and I don't (laughs) really want to think about him having sex as much as I want my daughter to have sex. You know, I want them both to be safe and just to grow up as a person. Yeah. Like of all of my guys, even my, myself, like all of my myself and all my guy friends, like I can not put a finger on an, an an instance in which someone's father or mother was proud or thought of it as an accomplishment that their son had sex. I think you, I think you, I think, you see it on TV shows. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think she means it is like you see it in a lot of like coming of age movies or even in stereotypes of of, of young males. And that to lose your virginity as a man is a it's a big deal. I'm like, yeah, I just had sex, you know, and it's like I'm a man now or whatever. And like, depending on the situation with a woman, it can be interpreted as, as shameful, or you already see very liberate. You don't see it very liberating in a lot of media. But you look, you okay. look at All right. you look, that, you look that, at- that's a fair statement. Like, but I, I, I don't, I, I would never. I mean. Okay, for both of my children, I, when it's time for them to have sex with a partner, I want them to be in a healthy, happy relationship. That's what I want from yeah, them. Yeah, of course. I don't want them to be in a situation where they're just having a one-night thing or they're having no having a fling or something. I want them to be in a healthy, happy like relationship where they've been with a boyfriend or a girlfriend for however long. And they feel very comfortable as far as opening up to that person. That's what but, I want. But, what, but, what but, if, I don't, but, I, but I'm but not they, thinking about that time at this point. The, what, if, what if they don't have, if they, if they just want to have one night stands and they just want to have 
I mean, would you would you be okay with that? I mean, to me, it's it's not once they once they reach a certain age, it's really not my call. Sure, once they reach a certain age, but I'm also trying to just get them to a point where they're healthy, happy adults <laughs> and comfortable with who they are. Where they, yeah. where they, where, yeah. where they move out and have a, and they don't bug you anymore. Like I'm, I'm trying to mentally fast forward, you know, however many years. Like, uh, well, I guess the point that I would try to make that is the way that I would, I hope to be able to parent my kids, is that the way that they're brought up, the way that they're that the the things they see in their parents, the things that they see in the the um in the um uh, morals and ideas that we bring them up in. Well, hopefully, and I, I again, this goes to the, it gets to a point where they're their own age and they they, they, do, they have their own their own way they do things. But I, I hope that everything that I do as a parent in these next however many years instills upon them an idea of that they should be able to treat people with respect. They should. I, I think that's. I think it's what it comes as. I think that's. They should be able to look at these situations as like this isn't something. It's not a conquest. It's not an achievement unlocked. Not a, not a notch on your belt. It's not a notch in the belt. And if I if that isn't the case, then, then I would feel terribly that I did something wrong. Because I think that parenting, good parenting, good examples, and being able to instill what I perceive, and I hope many people agree with me, is... is as a decent person and, and tell me who'd, who'd kind of go through that is will be instilled upon my kids at the same time. I also have to come to the realization. I think we all have to come to the realization that, I mean, I, I, I can't, can't tell you how fearful I am of this age eventually is that <laughs> there's, there's very little you can do to control the mind of somebody who is going through a crazy hormonal time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. the, the thing, that, but the thing that you can <laughs> it, do, it, 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 wait till they hit the, the teens. Yeah. But the things that you can do is you can prepare them to be the type of person that hopefully going into that phase of their life will be shaped and molded in a way that it will help them make better decisions. You would think. And and by the way, uh, can we read these like moral questions like before I'm like two beers in? <laughs> And, well, I, I, but, I, but I did definitely I, well after the, the shitting on Clint Eastwood because I think this is a nice little yin to the yang. Yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> also, yeah, I would Clint parent. Yeah. Well, that's. I think this. I I told Cindy. I said I think this movie was more about Clint Eastwood's life because I, he had uh, he had three or four wives, right? He's had three or four wives. He's had different relationships. He's had. I don't think he's always been. I, I think he's he he hasn't always been. From what I've heard, he wasn't always an. His, he always put his work first, hmm. and this is basically what this movie is about. Even though his one of his daughters is in the movie, play, he plays his daughter in the movie. And I I told Cindy afterwards, I go, I think this is mostly about Clint Eastwood's life because that's how he. I mean, not that he was a bad, terrible dad, but I think he put you know my my career comes first. And I think that's what this this is what this movie is about. Anyway, that's what I got out of it. Anyway, also thank you, Jack, for realizing you need not use girls as an insult. I realized that it was the way growing up. For, you know, it's it's growing up, but you didn't even think about it. It's, it's like when you said, "Oh, you play ball like a girl, or you throw like a girl." It just was. It just it just what everybody said. You didn't think, "Okay, I'm insulting, I'm insulting fifty percent of the world's population by saying it." You didn't, I didn't, you you just didn't, you didn't even think about it. Women are not the weaker sex. Women are just as capable as men. Women can be just as athletic as men. I know that neither of you or Nick really understands how hurtful comment, how hurtful. I know that neither you or Nick really understand how hurtful a comment is, was, especially since it was done in society, but it really was. I'm just as much a person as you. Just as awesome, even though society doesn't always see me that way. Except you do, you could do larger font. I think that would be better. But yeah, you, but you, you have TV shows that we talk about Wonder Woman, and and you have. You, I think Hollywood helps too because that's what you see. That's what you you know growing up. That's what you saw. You saw that women were just the eye candy, or they just the you know the the background. You know, like in the westerns, they were just. They weren't really seen. You know, like in Battlestar Galactica, there's an episode of Battlestar Galactica where they're doing a, a round-robin boxing 
tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. you have Apollo fighting Starbuck in the ring, and they're beating this. And that, for me, was an uncomfortable – I mean, I get it. It's, it was just how – you know, women were just – on equal par, but for me that was a tough scene to watch. I really liked that episode. I, I did too. It's, a, it's an it's an excellent episode, but for me the first time I saw that episode was like, oh god, I don't. Know. I, I'd like to talk to the actors and okay, you're. How did that feel? You know, did you get any? Did you get any flack for that, or did you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I'd actually, it, yeah, I'd actually like to see most sports get that way where it's like there's no longer. A, the difference like you just if you're good enough to make the team you make the team or or well, I, I think that i think that will eventually happen i think that eventually you're going to have women in major league baseball you'll have women in football you know but there is a size difference yeah you know there is a size difference and i think that society i know when i when i was in little league we when i was 12 a girl jo played literally she she joined the league and my mom actually got mad at me during the tryouts i was one of the guys i was already on a team and i was i took off my glove and she thought i was making fun of the girl but no, i was tying the little leather strap on it my dad actually protected me at the time i said no 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 he was tying it because she thought i took off my glove because the girls can't hit but when she when i would face that team i literally walked her every time because i was afraid to hit her with the ball because I didn't want to get my ass kicked, like because you know it's just like one of those things. But that was back in seventy. I don't know, it was twelve seventy four, something like that. So it was different times, different things. So anyway, but no, I do realize it is an insult, and I do, I do just like. You know. uh, so, so I appreciate the discussion that came about this because of the email, Chris. I think we need to have these kinds of conversations all the time. It's hard to understand when you are. The privilege side, just like with the with racism, discussions can help foster an understanding and change. Maybe if we can change society and make women less of sexual objects, we are more hu equal humans. We'd have less rape, assault, domestic violence, sex trafficking. Maybe in a small way, this normal people can change the world. Love you guys, Des, and she has her address here, and I'll send it on to. Uh... The only thing about rape is, isn't it more of a power thing? It's not really. Don't they say it's more, less about sex and more about power seriously you want to talk about rape now <laughs> well, i'm just i'm just well i'm answering the email i'm just saying but isn't that more what yeah it's, it's I, just about power power I, and uh control i, and I think we control and, and desire a lack of des a desire but lack of fulfilling well, here's, here's what I, there's there's i'm sure there's men out men rapists out there that oh, absolutely have, have have the opportunity to have sex but they still choose to rape women because so. that but I, I think what should happen is like when this kid from Stanford and the, the other guy recently that, that raped a woman and only got three months of probation like this, when you're when it's pretty proven that you, you've done this, you do hard time. You, you're not let out. You're not just slapped on the wrist and said, OK, I'm sorry you did this. Like a anyone who assaults a child, I don't think you should ever see the light of day again. That's just me. I, you empty out the jails of the people that are doing drugs and, and selling drugs and you put them with people that are actually doing harm because once they come out again, they they say they're not. It's it's a disease that they can't control. Why are we letting them out again? Mm -hmm. To get it's just for me. I, I personally, if you if you have sexually assaulted a child, oh you, god, you, you yeah, should that's... you should never fucking see the light of day again. I don't know why we're we're so soft on it. But that that's just me. I, I I I do agree that if you you can probably change, but like we said with human trafficking and stuff like that. I, I don't know why it's not more of a concern from people, but our politicians, but anyway, that was Des's email. Thanks for sending it. Des. The print was better. The font was a little better, <laughs> but I will forward the, I'll forward the, uh, your address on to, uh, Matt and you'll get to, uh, two drawings. Yes. Uh, for the, the, the price of, uh, two emails. So and if you like, if you, if, if you have a comment on this, if you, if you, Want to protect Clint Eastwood? If you want to, if you want to say something about what we've talked about tonight, you can send us an email to rcadcast at gmail.com. I think that's it, isn't it? And one quick update from uh, a couple of shows ago. Remember we talked about during the baby it's cold outside thing. Um, about yes. A specific story uh, with Syntonia Brown, you know, the the woman right. who was sent to jail for the killing drug her. Her. Um, good news. Yeah. Antonia Brown has been granted full clemency, and she oh, will be good. not serving out her entire 
or any more. Well, of how long her. was she? How long was she in prison for? Fifty years. She but, no. She, how, how long? Was she how long did years she? Or twenty? Fifteen or twenty years? She'll be released well, in August. I'm not a big per, a big believer in suing people, but I hope she gets a nice lawsuit. I do too. Uh, she was going to be serving at least 51 years before even being eligible for uh, parole. Uh, now she's got getting granted full clemency, which is phenomenal. Not that, um, you know, it's funny. That's we, we kind of bashed social media earlier about how bullying, but she'd probably still be in prison if it weren't for social media. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Sure. I, I think, I think her, her story definitely like benefited from there's some good things on social media and some bad things, but that's, that's, a, that's one of the good ones. Yeah. Anyway, um, so anyways, a little, a little bit of a bright side to the story. Uh, that's good. I hadn't heard that it's good news. I was too busy watching old Clint Eastwood movies. <laughs> Clint Eastwood in as an old person in a movie or whatever. Well, yeah, go and you know you should really take the time. You know, sit down with your wife and and watch Bridges of Madison County. You know, I really think that's about the the loves that he lost in his life, and it's a more. Why don't, of an why don't you just give me a quick recap, and I'll I'll consider it done. No, I can't because I, I can't bring you to cheers. You know? <laughs> okay, if I watch this movie and I don't like it, what do you owe me? A drawing? <laughs> <laughs> that's the only, that's the only uh, you know, credit I got here, apparently. So. I know I'm going to take some heat for it, but I just, I just saw it and I go, you know, that came back in the 80s, right? No, it was the uh, 90s, mid-90s, like 90, mid-90s, 96. And I like, and nothing is, Mer- I like Meryl Streep movies, but... Uh, Clint, come on. Anyway. Wow, wow. <laughs> I don't think that's a Meryl Streep movie, is it? What's that? It kind of wow, chicka wow, wow. Is that? Really- well, you know, I'm just saying Clint and her in the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, right. by the way, Meryl Streep is in uh, Mary Poppins Returns. Oh, is she? And, yeah, and I didn't really like her scene or her song as much. So it's probably like the week. Oh, she si- she sings. She sings. Yeah, I didn't know no, she. Nothing sings. against Meryl Streep or or that part. I I understand why it was put in there, but just because she favorite. she didn't sing during Kramer versus Kramer, so I didn't know she was a singer. <laughs> what was she yeah. singing about in that one? God. I want a divorce. I want a divorce. <laughs> divorce from you. Please give me my kid. I yeah. need. Oh. <laughs> if you haven't seen Kramer versus Kramer, excellent movie, by the way. Or moonlighting, for that matter. It's funny, like I don't know, like it's like I yeah I think Kramer is, 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 is she, a good is she, movie, is she but... in moonlighting. No, she's not in moonlighting. That's uh, that's Sybil Shepherd. Yeah, I get confused yeah. all the time. Who are you talking about? Well, I was Meryl saying with Meryl Streep. <laughs> I do. I actually really get them confused all of the time. Sybil now that I think about it, Meryl Streep and Sybil yeah. Shepherd. Yeah, because Sybil yeah. Shepherd was like nominated for tons of Oscars. Yeah. Yeah, because when you think, I mean, because Meryl, not that she's not a good actress, but she, one has a southern accent. Well, they're both one. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I get confused all the time. Uh, Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> all right, guys. If you'd like to help this show, do you shop Amazon? I do. What do you do when you shop Amazon, Matt? Well, lately I've been sh- shopping for uh, art books because I got this class that I'm teaching. Um, but, you know, lots of people have other things coming up like Valentine's Day or even if you don't have a significant other to send a Valentine's Day to present to. You know, there's tons of, of January deals, I'm sure, out there. Or all of the things you didn't get for, you know, Christmas that you're like, damn it. Why didn't they give me this? This is what I really wanted. I just want socks. So I got too much socks now. I love uh, so- I love brand new socks. I, I do. I, I love all the socks that I got, but you know, <laughs> I'm, anyway, watching, I'm watching Chris right now. So. <laughs> if if you want to, uh, you know, help us out at all, you know, um, you can always go to uh, J and Jack slash Amazon. No, J and Jack dot com slash Amazon. This is like the, the worst part about this is it's not even a joke anymore. None of us can get it right. I, I think I, I got it right. I think I got it right. I just say go to jjack.com slash Amazon. That's, that's I just go to jjack.com. It's, it's no, right no, there. I, I, I know it is that. Chris I, is I, back in his favorite pose again. Yep. Yeah, he's got no <laughs> well, you know, Chris sent me a note. Right at 1041, we're at an hour and a half, and now it's almost 1125. No, no wonder he's stroking it. So uh, Amazon, uh, go to our Amazon affiliate link a little bit, uh, goes to help all of the patrons. Uh, we appreciate all of your support. And here's um, a helpful hint for those of you who have an iPhone, or I think you can probably do this on, on uh, what do you call it, the Android phones as well. But if you do go to jandjack.com slash Amazon, 
and you go to the website, you can hit the little share box button down the bottom. You can create an icon for your home screen. So for instance, whenever I shop on Amazon, I'm here on my phone. I have this little app that says Amazon hyphen J and Jack. So it's actually an app button. So it just brings me directly to the Amazon app. So that's the way to do it. Yes. Yeah, but it gives us the link, which is fantastic. So fantastic. create yourself an icon for your home screen, and you can make that shopping very easy. And you'll never have to remember it because neither can we. <laughs> or you can help us out by giving us a five-star review on iTunes. Did we get any five-star reviews? We have not. I looked it up a while ago. We have, haven't had one since December 8th. So what get on it, people. people. Doing yes. there? What are send, you fucking doing out there? Send us a review. I, I send out uh, artwork all the time. I make it either on the show or sometime between the show, I, I I make these little cards. I send them out. Lots of people post them on the jandjack.com um, or Jay and Jack Facebook group. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, also on the Patreon group, they like to post those. So you can also uh, you can also help us out. Like the other three, like I'll, I'll post a link to the show on the RCAD Twitter feed, and like the three hosts on here, you can retweet. That link, which gives exposure to, you know, it's social media. And so the more retweets we get, in fact, when we did the retweet contest, our listenership was at its highest. Man. So like the three hosts here who go yeah. out of their way to retweet the link. Do, I, all the time. I tweeted on four different links. And different flight, flight, flight. I'm just saying that basically I get no help from the uh, other host here. <laughs> but if you want to be a good person and help, if you like this if you like the show, if you like the show, and there's no way to retrieve the password, if you like the show, just and we you see the link out there. You know what? I'm gonna help Jack out since the other three hosts don't. I'm gonna just go. <laughs> it literally takes a second to go retweet. He goes, Do you want to retweet this? Retweet this, or you can share it with your friends on Facebook. Hey, I listen to this podcast. It gets a little raunchy sometimes, but deep down, three of the four guys are really nice guys. <laughs> They're really nice guys. So anyway, you can help us out that way, or you can become a patron. Go to patron.com slash J and Jack, or just go to J and Jack.com. Is there an app for that one, Chris? Is it to have just like an app to become a patron? There should be. Okay. <laughs> I don't have it. So at the, at the dollar level, you get to join us on the live, um, uh, after dark feed that we do. So yes. you get to join us with that. Um, and Matt has three beers during that episode. Sometimes uh, <laughs> the, uh, at the five dollar level, there's something else, and actually at the dollar at the dollar range, yeah, it's act, it's actually some of the funnier stuff is 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 not on the podcast; it's in the chat. Oh yeah, it is. The chat uh, blows up. We also have a hangouts that happens. Uh, you get to join us. Uh, Jay actually shows up for that one. So if you're missing Jay, you really and, have to and, who, and who's not who's not missing Jay. Uh, we aren't, Ooh. but you know, if you want, <laughs> Nick just raised his hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can join us, uh, and we're gonna have a pizza party next uh, Sunday uh, without without Chris. Without um, Chris, because Chris said, yeah. "Fuck it, I don't care. I don't want to be there." Yes, I'm, I'm really curious how that's gonna pan out because it's gonna pizza pan out. I, yeah, but like, <laughs> too bad they don't have square pan. Pizza so, anymore. so you get a pizza delivered to you, Matt. Yeah, of which I don't get to eat. Or no, I'm gonna eat it. And I'm gonna talk. About it's like, damn, your pizza looks so much better than mine. Looks, it looks good. Like, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll never I'm, know, but okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go pick up my pizza because I'm not ordering fucking Domino's or Pizza oh, yeah, Hut. Yeah. I, we, we have this pizza, this, a little Italian restaurant we go to that has makes an save outstanding it for the pizza. Save, save it for the podcast. I'm trying to entice. This is this is what's in people. Are like, you know what? I gotta hear what kind of pizza Jack's gonna order. I'm gonna sign up for the fifteen dollar levels just so I can hear what kind of pizza he's gonna order. I'm sure. Tell you what, I'm going to give you something for free. You don't even have to sign up for this. You just got to tune in next week. Next week, I'm going to give a review on the results I received from my Ancestry DNA test. Ah. Well, all right. Well, okay, can I, can, I, can I just ask you ahead of time, were you as disappointed as everyone else is? No. We're, I, it's pretty spot on. Were, were, you, were you white? Sexually <laughs> related to Tom Brady. That's, all, all, I, that's, that's all I was. All I was. <laughs> There's no traces in Boston. Uh, <laughs> no, I kid, I kid. Strong, <laughs> strong evidence of providence, though. Yes, yeah, strong, <laughs> strong Rhode Island um, presence. Um, no, I, I'll give those results and uh, share my thoughts on. Oh my the God, whole process. I, I, I can't. Can we just? Can we record now? Now, you know, <laughs> I, I you got know, it out. <laughs> uh, Okay, there are actually five uh, people that uh, Chris is not related to. Oh yes, um, <laughs> that we know. Tack from Tokyo. 
that guy ripped Nick Lafelter, who I, I was he, like, he, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> took, took, me, took me a second to figure it out. I, if you if you don't if you don't have Twitter account, I, I love Eckhart because he likes to pick on Nick. He does. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I need to follow. Dude, it's eleven thirty. Um, <laughs> and the letter carrier. You know, I finished I finished Band of Brothers, and I, I talked to my wife. And I go, you know, who he looks like he looks like Ed in in the in the, the, the this character in Band of Brothers. Well, not character person from Band of Brothers, and he, the the guy on Band of Brothers he looks like is a letter carrier. No shit. Yeah, just sit there. I, I just finished no my shit. <laughs> uh, Ed the Little Care, Maggie the Magnificent, and Joanne with the plan. Thanks for what you do. Thanks for all our patrons. Thank you, thank you. We do. We, we really, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And we're sorry this show dragged on so long. We've been trying to keep them tight. We haven't talked in two weeks. What are we yeah, going to do? So, yeah. and, and, you know, you can always skip past the first 20 minutes of football talk, and you still got an ha- hour and a half. of. Well, you're, you're telling jokes. people at the end of the show to skip the first 20 minutes. How are they going to know that? I mean, oh, he's going to put, put, put it in his notes. <laughs> okay. Show notes. Well, so, we really don't want them skipping the first 20 minutes. but Sure, yeah. Well, there's some decent stuff in there. Yeah, fuck you, Dean Spanos. Yeah. All right, great yeah. show. It was one in the million. I had fun. It was great talking to you guys again. Um, that's it. I'll see. Well, who's going to show up for the pizza thing? I guess I will. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're making the serial killer happy. I can't even need. use the Patriots as an excuse. I actually have to work. Well, you, you got to provide for your, you know, yeah. your kids got to eat. Mm. And we're going to have pizza. Mm. That's all I got. Oscar yeah, Luego. It's, it's really one in a million. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> we need a song for Nick. We need a song that we.